Hello, what's up, woman? Hello, hello, how's it going? Oh, wow, look at you, you look nice. Thank you, I like your shirt, what's on it? You don't recognize it? No, should I? Uh, yeah, if you were like into punk, it's Blondie. Oh, Debbie I've Harry. never heard of Blondie at least. Oh, that's good. Yeah, it's progress. That's good. All right. Um, well, it's good that we're um, we're back in the studio recording some more shows since our hiatus, right? Yeah, how's that hiatus been treating you? Um, well, let's see. I got something new. Ooh, very nice. Guess what it is. Guess what it Could is. Could it be a, a brand new smile? New to you? New. I got my teeth put in, my implant. Hooray. Looks See, great. When you're old like me, your teeth are going to possibly fall out if you're like a grinder. Right. And then so that's you, what I have to look forward to. Yeah, it's one of the awesome things. Great. And then you uh, have to spend thousands and thousands of dollars in two dental plans and... Um, and it takes a year and you look like a crackhead. Perfect. That's kind of my dream. Yeah, that's what I just went through. And then I, I put it, I get it in. And, and then like the next day I do a call with Uli and I'm so psyched, you know, I'm like, look, Uli, I, I got my smile back. And he goes, there's, st there's still a gap. <laughs> so helpful. So thoughtful. Like that's how you say to your girlfriend, you say, Ah, oh, look at you, baby. You look, you look gorgeous. I'm sure that's what he thought. That was his first thought. And then he just only said his second thought out loud. I think it's a German thing. You know, they're not, they, maybe they don't express their emotions. Maybe. Anyway. Um, well, okay. So, um, I think we are... Let's see where we're at. We're, um, I guess I'll share the screen to orient myself uh, more than anything else. Um, all right. Uh, today's the day that we uh, work with Sarah to go through chapters seven and eight mm -hmm. because she thinks that there's structural problems. No okay. um, And I think like her issues are around uh, that one of the chapters is about how to uh, do rapid prototyping for an experiment and why experiments are important. And then chapter eight's about conducting online user research as an experiment. And she's, I think like there's some, uh, a, a mixture of uh, confusion and just, um, fragmented parts, fragmented writing. Yeah. yeah. So I wrote her yesterday. Well, you were there, right? We wrote the email to her. Mm -hmm. after she tried to like put a half of chapter seven into eight. Right. And um, so I think we should go ahead and, and start looking at her comments and she's going to join us um, in a little bit. And uh, my goal today is that we hash everything out, kind of like how we did that call with Eric. Mm -hmm. Oh um, boy. Yeah, well, she's not. It won't be nearly as eventful, you know, but hopefully just as productive. Yeah. Um, well, you know, you're the worst president we've ever had in America. Oh, wait, sorry. I was having a debate flashback. All right. Um, so anyway, um, let me see. So we're, let's, let's go through and take a look at it. Uh, okay. And I think we want to get through everything. So 
that we can turn seven through nine in on Friday to the tech reviewers. Mm -hmm. That'd be wonderful. Have yeah. that done. Yeah. So um, let's take a look at what's going on here. And uh, let me turn this on a little low to not. You don't hear it, right? Mm -hmm. I, okay. Um, let's see if there's anything new that we can just knock out. All right. I guess we should go with her at the top down. I think a lot of this other stuff is copy edits. Move this down. So at, at least, not at least, but um, Airbnb according to Crunchbase. What is this? It? Should just break it into two sentences. Is it okay now? Put in quotes. What's this? Why in quotes? I don't think so. Was it just because we said according to Crunchbase? Oh. Hmm. Does that mean we need to put a comma after this thing? All right. The period goes. Sorry. If we do, the period goes inside the quotes. Um. Delete that, delete space, and uh, strongly advocate. Fidelity refers to, that's nice. Uh, we will use the prototype to show to, we had to show to online participants via video online user music via online using video conferencing platforms. So she has, should I just accept these? I can't even tell what it's doing. Yeah, she's saying in chapter eight, we'll use the prototype on online participants via video conferencing platforms. I don't like saying use the prototype on online participants, but. That neither. Okay, in chapter eight, I like if we'll, we will show the prototype to online. How about that? Yeah, I think that's kind of a blend of what we had before and her update. To online, be, uh, be okay. Uh, show or share? I like to share the prototype with on, online there, participants. Yeah, they're interacting with it. And yeah, have, you're not just showing them the screens and saying, this is what it is. Actually, they're sharing their screen with us, right? Yeah, I mean, we send We're them sharing. the prototype and then they share. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. What is this problem here? If you are not a seasoned designer, you can still learn the rapid prototype. I have been teaching. I feel like this paragraph came from somewhere else. Uh, she moved it. I don't know where it was before. Oh, it came after the steps. She just moved it up above the steps. That's fine. what that whole paragraph is that's cut out. That's fine. It's right. Yeah, I think so. Okay. It's like, wait, is it a little bit weird that, because before we had it, that was kind of the setup to talking about like you've taught a bunch of USC students and then it went into introducing me. Wait, are you saying me? Before, it was like, we had that intro paragraph, and then we had the four steps, and then we had this paragraph about, like, even if you're not a seasoned designer, like, I can still teach engineering students how to do this. Here's one of the students. That's kind of how it flowed before. Well, you mean before we just moved it this very second, or two versions ago? I mean, here, here we have Meet Jessica. That's why it's down here. Yeah. 
And so you're saying we should keep it down there. Yes, I agree with her change. I was undecided because I couldn't tell if we needed to keep introducing me and introducing the class together, but I don't think we do. I think her update is fine. once every four months cleaning crews here. Nice. Yeah. Uh, um, so, so you're, so we're going to go ahead and move that here. Yeah, I think we can accept her changes. I don't know that we want to hyphenate user research, but. What does this depend? Yes. We're, we're definitely talking about key experiences in chapter six. Well, we can just leave her comment. Maybe it's for her to come back and look at something. Okay. Um, I'm gonna accept her delete down here. Oh, here's that again. Um, I don't get what is at this point in her process. Jessica validated her customer segment, did competitive research. Not at this point. Prior to this point, Jessica validated the customer segment, did competitive research. Okay, let me, um, if we're, we're losing star your engines, so roll up your sleeve because it's time to get your hands dirty. That's fine. She said, oh, there was like a comment attached to that. Oh, I forgot it as well. <laughs> All right, so. Um, I think it was just something about like, we don't need this and start your engines or something. Yeah, yeah, I think. Okay, because this is a, uh, alluding or whatever going back to the trade yet that I didn't get I never expected to get my hands this dirty mm -hmm. so I get okay meet Jessica budding her value is a mobile application yes think she wanted to see if she get what's going on why is this getting crossed up she just wants to get rid of this sentence why I don't know Should we leave it in to talk about why? Yeah, maybe. Okay, in figure eight, you can see Jessica's I think she just wants to either like keep, like she wants to get rid of this sentence and instead have this whole, at this point in the process, Jessica validated, but we, I think we're saying yesterday when we were rewriting this part that this little summary isn't really helpful to people. Right, you mean the one, the checklist thing? Yeah, so we can talk to her about that. Oh, so let's leave the comment, right, right, right. Yeah. Okay, so. Is, what is this? Did we move it or did she write that? I think she rewrote what I had written. Are you okay with it? Yeah, I think I think what she wrote looks good. Okay. Uh, 
And then that is definitely killed. Um, this is gone. It is choppy. You've got an earlier choice, which I like better and calls back to the trade story. Now Jessica ready to roll up her sleeve. Um, I like saying it's time to get your hands dirty rather than now it's time for Jessica to get her hands dirty. But yeah. I don't know. Didn't we just say, are we repeating the steps? I don't understand. So he, I think she wants us to move this so roll up your sleeves because it's time to get your hands dirty down to the bottom where it says start your engines. Okay, so we don't want to say it twice. No. Okay. And I don't want to say that Jessica's getting her hands dirty. All right. No. We know we're going to discuss that stuff. Okay. And then show some la la la. It is choppy, which I like better and calls back to the trade story. I don't know. Now. Oh, look. Someone named DZ Mobile is joining us. Oh boy. I wonder who that could be. Let's see. Oh no, maybe it's Sarah. <laughs> I mean, it's... Hey, Hello. Sarah. Yeah. Hello, hello, Sarah. Happy Wednesday. Happy Wednesday. Happy hump day. Okay. Let me get organized here. How is this going so far? How is the session going so far? Catch me up. What's been happening? <laughs> um, not much. We got a late start um, and we're trying to just tackle the simple copy edits and mm -hmm. familiarize with your latest changes. Um, so the goal though um, for today is that I want us to finish whatever. You haven't started on nine yet, is that right? I've skimmed through it. So the only chapters that I haven't gone through a final edit truly with are eight and nine at this point. Okay, so we're handing off now seven through nine on Friday to the tech reviewers. Mm -hmm. That's what you said, yeah. I didn't realize the last time I talked to you all, I thought that all chapters had been handed off to the tech reviewers by September 15th. No, we got to do a staggered thing and now it's even more staggered because 10 is so drafty. Mm -hmm. um, and 11, we haven't even touched it, but um, so we sent one through six. Um, and then, uh, we need to send seven through nine on Friday and, uh, ideally you're going to have a chance to go through it. Um, yeah, so I, I didn't realize that. So this is why you saw edits coming from me earlier today. Cause I wanted to make sure chapter seven was done the final edit. And then I have eight, and nine to tackle. Jessica, I sent Jamie an email. I don't think I talked about my editorial strategy overall, but the plan was to do a, a, a first read through, which was just to like read everything through and be like, oh, this is what's happening. <laughs> All the chapters basically. Right. And I think you and Jamie handled a lot of those edits and comments and notes that I kind of left myself going through. And then the second read through is where I'm bringing my recommendations to the table of like, I think this is what we need to do in order to tighten up the flow and tighten up the story. So actually mm -hmm. overall, Jamie, um, chapters one through six, I think look pretty good, except for, um, I have kind of like a working highlight of um, like overview of like the big points, but really like the, 
the kind of the story spirals aren't necessarily bad and they don't necessarily flood over into other chapters. So that's tap, you know, pat yourselves on the back, Jessica and Jamie. Yay. Wait, wait, thank you. But the snores, the, the, the snarls, the, the parts where the story kind of gets a little sticky and you're like, wait, what's happening? Um, they don't necessarily cross chapters. And then per your comment, because I had sent that proposal about moving stories in chapter seven to chapter eight, and that was vetoed, which is fine. Um, in doing chapter seven, actually, I didn't do, there's not a lot of restructuring. It's actually just a lot of like refining and sculpting that went on. That's what a lot of my comments are about in this chapter. So hopefully that'll happen in eight and nine also. So, yay. Okay. Yeah, I'm hoping that there's more clarity on what these chapters are about. Um, Cause I think, um, you know, it's probably clear to you that Jessica and I have been rewriting quite a bit and especially you're going to get into eight, nine and yeah, I'd say they're 80% rewrites and 10 is a hundred percent. So yeah, definitely. Those are new chapters completely for me. And I, and that's why I'm reading them twice. Cause I want to not just read them with the expectations of the first edition, but to come to them with the expectations of like, this is different and how is everything fitting in now? So, um, so with, with that said, like anything in chapter one through seven, I'm fine going over and discussing kind of in my mind, a lot of the comments are probably things that you and Jessica can handle and um, discuss on your own. Of course, I'm happy to go through any that you want to have discussed. And then there are a couple of high level ones that I think would be good for us to discuss against across all the chapters. Um, the one comment I did just want to make sure that I, I checked in with you about it is in chapter three, there's an Eric Swenson comment about non-essential language and benefiting from tightening. And I just wanted to make sure that I understood where that comment was coming from. Okay. Um, let's, uh, one second. Mm. Uh, uh, okay. So, uh, I, I'm sorry. I, I have a possible tenant who wants to look at the property. The, the studio apartment, so I have to, it'll take five minutes. So I'm gonna let you guys just talk. Uh, maybe Sarah can bring you, excuse me, Jessica can bring you up to speed, just so you know on the order of the handoffs. Yeah. I think. Can you do yeah. that, Jessica? Mm -hmm. just what our plan is, because we basically have to do 10 and 11 next week, and we have to turn in 10 and 11 next week. Yeah. Um, she could also, I tell you about who the, the tech reviewers are. Exciting. I, I know who they are. I'll, <laughs> I'll tell you when I get back. Cool. Right. I'll be right back. Sounds good. Um, yeah, so we turned in one through six. That was what was on September 15th. Mm -hmm. um, so originally we were planning to turn in all the chapters and then lo and behold, we had not finished all of them. Um, I mean, which is life, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. So um, we talked so to the editor. And why there was such a clearance of comments on one yes. through six yeah yeah so which which again I was like I when Jamie said that I was like oh okay <laughs> yeah right yeah. yeah that's why it was just like a little panicked like oh clear everything turn everything into a pdf so we can send it in right now um right. yeah so that's what happened with one three six and then seven through nine is what we're supposed to turn in by this Friday Mm -hmm. Um, cause the tech reviewers already got one through six. And so they've already been like reading over those and then they're just like sitting around wait, I mean, yeah, or they haven't read any of it, but theoretically they're sitting around waiting for the next batch of chapters. Totally. So I'm kind of st I'm stretching here cause ideally if this, if our workshop doesn't go on too long today, then I'm going to try and knock out eight in the next 24 hours. Each one is taking me between two and three hours basically. Okay. so um and then you know like you know you got to do like the first read through and then you got to sit with it and then yeah. so it's not a consecutive <laughs> yeah no, no. Three hours. and i think the nice um, thing is like the tech review is much more I, I don't know what our last update was to you about what we knew about the tech review but the tech review is basically like um jamie picked out a couple people that are like ux yeah, strategists or digital time. transformation yeah. experts and stuff like that and and then I guess O'Reilly has a couple more people they wanted to send it to, but yeah. So it's this is why any comments that I have are less about whether this is the correct term overall in the industry and more like 
we used this term earlier. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> what are we going to do? So that's what the tech reviewers are for. And I'm fine with them doing that. Yeah. Um, this is also why at least like for the copy when I'm, so the third part is, is like once we do the second read through where we make, or make the recommendations is to do just a general copy edit. So go through the book again and copy edit and refine. And I'm assuming the Eric Sindelson comment is about that. So I'm assuming that's one that'll get handled. Yeah. Um, but I kind yeah. of got the sense, at least based on the comment, it seemed like it might be a mix between just personal preference and writing style and Jamie's own tone and voice versus just tightening up the languages and tightening the sentences. So yeah, I remember when we were going through the earlier chapters and we had like some of your comments and some of Eric's comments. And when we were going through trying to like resolve some of the comments and, and clean things up, there was a lot of like, there were some places where like, we have a comment that says like, oh, like define this term that obviously when we were writing it, we're like, oh, this is like obvious enough. We don't need to define it. And then there was other places where like, I think Eric in particular called out and was like, really? Like you have to, like one place we, we explained what Google was and he's like, really, really, you know? <laughs> so it was like, I think some of that also came from this weird mismatch in like the kinds of like definitions we provide. I remember that was like a big, source of conflict as we were like reviewing the comments in the chapters because it's yeah and I think that's still it's not happening as much now in the last read through that I did I think it's still happening a little bit and so I'm thinking on the copy editors when I'll pick it up because we aren't going to be worrying so much about like what is the story are we saying this right what's going on and we can right. just be like how do we you know this sentence is four lines can we cut it in half <laughs> right exactly <laughs> you know? exactly um, um make sure the tense is there okay so that's that was mainly kind of the big one overall that I wanted to do. And then since I have you, and I know that you'll help Jamie with this, is do you remember in chapter eight, there was a document where I just did a huge chunk of a rewrite instead of putting it in the, yes. the doc. So I, I have that in comments as well. I've been doing that for several sections on chapter okay. six and seven in particular, where it's all in the same document with anchor links, but okay. just so that you're aware, like when I have that link, it's basically go to this document and I've just reorganized the whole Done some rewriting in there. And it was just easier to put it over here than to make a bunch of comments. Yeah, um, I don't know. It totally yeah. makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, and then to give you a little bit of context, I know Jamie, Jamie was emailing you back yesterday about like the experiment addict story and like where that fits in chapter seven or chapter eight. Um, so I think kind of the big issue, which Jamie and I were debating about this a little bit, we had a little bit of disagreement, you know, sometimes it happens. Um, and so she was like, I think seven is really tight. And I was like, I think it's probably one of the weaker chapters right now. Um, but so we were kind of like hashing it out. We were talking about, um, cause she feels really, really strongly about including experiments in chapter seven, where I was like, agreeing a little bit more with you that I was like, I don't see where like this is fitting together, but I think kind of the consensus yeah. that we came to that just ended up being like this long rambling email that I think she wrote back to you afterwards was like, we have all these pieces of things. We have like how to create a prototype. What is the prototype? The whole, like the trade just story, the definition of like a hypothesis and all this random stuff. Um, no, I totally get where the decision came from and what was going on. And so the edit and everything that was done today was basically to address the concern that you and I have, which is like, there's kind of a bunch of pieces floating pieces. around. Yeah. And like, I think the main thing that was confusing in the first couple times I read it is that experiment and prototype are kind of separated, but they're really quite connected. And so even with right. a little bit of work that you guys did, like, I think you changed a subhead here and there and like, that helped out a bit. And so hopefully with the suggestions that I've got going on right here, when we approve all of them or, you know, veto some of them, when we look back over it, it won't be so mishmashy. It mm -hmm. will be kind of more connected together. Yeah. Because at least right now I'd say the biggest, the biggest story thing that this biggest kind of story kerfuffle that I'm seeing is at the end of chapter five and in chapter six, um, but if we're going to keep the how to keep an experiment addict in chapter seven, and I think like with the changes that are going there, I actually don't have a huge like restructural comments or anything about that. It's more like there was a lot of redundancy. There's um, 
a lot of just like, um, I think just kind of making sure that people understand that experiment and prototype here are kind of being used interchangeably. Um, <clears throat> and that it's setting up for, and really in kind of like a way that's happened in the second edition, which wasn't true in the first, is like this chapter is kind of setting up a different um, section of the book where like the next couple chapters are going to discuss multiple ways of prototyping and how you can, um, and how this chapter is like the place setting for those chapters. Right. Well, so it's supposed to set up like the next, the next few chapters are about experiments. I exactly. think this is another issue that like Jamie and I are talking about, about the use of experiments, prototype, and MVP, that mm -hmm. like they're all supposed to be separate things. And in some places they like are being used interchangeably. Um, yeah. so, so I, I think, think that that's one thing that it. needs some help. Yeah. So I, I agree with you. I think it's the terminology and the fact that it kind of, so we'll, we'll see what happens when we go through and see how it goes down because what right. ended up happening in this last edit was less about moving or cutting things out, but just kind of being like, if we put a transition here, if we, um, you know, combine these paragraphs into just two paragraphs, <laughs> you know, yeah. like, can, does this help us get on the way a lot quicker than, mm -hmm. um, than what's currently happening? Because I feel like at least beforehand, I was kind of just hitting certain valleys and getting stuck and being like, okay, this is information, but what am I supposed to do with this information? Right. Yeah. Do you think that there's hope for tying together seven, eight, and nine? I, I Eight and nine, I, to be honest, like I've kind of been scared to touch those chapters because I'm just less familiar with them. <laughs> yeah, well. they're big, they're big, they're, they're, they're beefy big, chapters they're too. Different, and there's a lot of story going on there. Um, so yeah. And in some ways, maybe this deadline will be good because I'll finally have to just do it. Yeah. But actually, I've been, I was dreading chapter seven and just sitting down and kind of doing it like it was it kind of less like if this is if this is the way the story is going to go and this is the structural decisions that have already been made, and then like, OK, maybe it's OK, like the yeah. way it is here. So um, we'll see. Like, that's, that's the whole point of all that yeah. stuff. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, this chapter Your is like... The storyboard is very cute, so... Oh, thank you. Um... Yeah, it was very, I've never done a hand-drawn anything, so it was just, like, weird to put it in, and then after I did it, and then Jamie was like, well, maybe we'll get a professional to replace this, I was like, fair enough, I never said I was an artist in any way, shape, or form. Right, totally. Uh, totally. But, yeah, yeah, this chapter, it's just, like, it's a shorter chapter, in my eyes, I don't know, it seems shorter, but I feel like it's doing a lot of or it needs to do a lot of heavy lifting and like bridging from like you're, you're coming from six and then like we need to show you how to make a prototype but also there's only so much specificity you can give because prototypes are, are going to so be infinitely different yeah, yeah depending on yeah. what you're doing totally. um, Completely. and then it also needs to magically give you know introduce you to the experiments you're going to do in eight and nine so i think that's, that's what i mean it's like the place setting chapter for this like transition exactly and I think I, I think I finally got that. And so we'll, we'll see what happens. Um, like I, one of the big things, for instance, is I realized that the buzzword terminology sidebar actually isn't a sidebar. It's actually essential information because all of the inform it talks less about how they're buzzword terms, but more about how these are different types of experiments that can be prototypes. And I think like that's actually really key to um, the chapter and what you just said, because it's just like a prototype is an infinite versatile thing. These are very common types of prototypes and versatile ways of doing it. And we're going to talk about very specific ones, but now you have an idea of kind of where we're pulling from. What do you mean so, when you say like, these are different types of prototypes? The types of experiments. So the concierge, wizard of Oz, mechanical Turk. Okay. Like when you have a sidebar, a sidebar is basically treated in a way where it's supplementary material right. and the reader doesn't necessarily have to read it in the context of what they're reading right now. Right. They can skip over it or they can come back to it or they can know it's there or they can, you know, read it or whatever it is. But I actually think it's really important information to read in the body of the text. So it basically, if we take it out and we make it a bullet list instead of a sidebar, I think it actually helps us achieve everything that you're talking about more than... If we, Interesting. if we called it a buzzed, and I think by having the buzz, the buzzword terminology subhead, it, ma it masks and veils the true purpose of that bullet and, the, and, the, and what the information is actually communicating, which is that these are types of common experiments 
which we saw Jared take care of in the experiment addict. And now we're going to talk about, as we move into Jessica, the character Jessica. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's okay. I've been talking about myself in the third person yeah. too. Building, building out her prototype and that we're going to see in the other chapters. So like, that'll be an example of something when we get there. So same position, same place, but if we treat it as a different kind of, we treat, treat it as part of the body politic as opposed to, you know, something that's more of an appendix, then I think that helps us out. But we'll see. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah, right. I'll let Sorry. No worries. Show it to Rob, the Hollywood rock guy who wants to put a Merlitzer in my... Okay. What did I miss? <laughs> Uh, we're just talking, yeah, we're just caught up on everything and just kind of talking about some overall thoughts I had for chapter seven, but waiting for you. Okay. So, um, I think we're, we're here till, is it four or five? I was planning to be here as long as you all needed me. Yeah. But I, was telling, I was telling Jessica, ideally, if we, if we're really efficient, I'll try and knock out chapter eight in the next 24 hours as well, because <laughs> I haven't done eight or nine yet. Um, yeah. And I'd like to get us to the technical review and then maybe yeah. we can talk I mean, tomorrow about it. Yeah. I mean, let's keep, let's, let's just go and we'll okay. figure it out. Cool. Um, that sounds great. Okay. So, uh, let's see. Um, so I think we can just go through the comments here for chapter yeah. seven. This yeah. There's really chapter eight and nine, right? If so, this should be at the end of the chapter. Yes. What? This is talking about, we're going to do structured experiments in the following chapters. So this was also a, a rewrite. Originally it said, uh, thus you need to jump from your storyboard to a MVP or prototype of your product, which will be used in structured experiments, period, which make it, made it sound like that's what we are going to cover in this chapter. And then yesterday we added in the following chapters. Yeah. But that's the question good. is still, should this be at the top as well as at the end? I think it should definitely be mentioned again at the bottom. So I left the comment here just to make sure that that's something that. Okay, happens. I'm clearing it. All right, so um, I'll, another note is we might be getting away from this term structured, it doesn't mean anything, mm -hmm. and moving more into using the term uh, rapid experiments a lot, because um, that's what these are. We're using, which is why we're doing rapid prototyping for rapid experiments. Mm -hmm. um, there's going to be some word changes. Uh, this kick starts the process of blending the ingredients that make up all four tenants. Just okay. a suggested rewrite. Um, I don't know. What do you think? We had this in the first edition. Just a suggested rewrite, I think. The sentence is just tighter and more concise. It says the same thing. It loses kickstart. That is true. We lose kickstart. We're still on the plate analogy as well of juggling, which if you're not doing plates could mean you want a different verb. Um, Are we, are we juggling all four plates here? Yeah, honestly, I kind of wondered that myself. <laughs> but I remember that this chapter had all four plates. You definitely talk about value innovation. You definitely talk about validated user research. I you don't necessarily really talk about killer UX. But I mean, the point is that the prototype is showcasing the key experiences, which are the killer yeah, UX. Can you add an extra 30 minutes, please? No, no, I, no, just for three and a half hours total. That's all we're doing. Oh, all right. All right. Thank you. Bye. Sorry, horrible life. Okay. No worries. So I, we have value innovation. We've got validated user research. The killer UX is in the, the value innovation because we're showing the key experiences. And there is the question about the business model at the end That's about how true. we want to validate it. So. Okay. Uh, so now as you prepare, we're finally juggling all four. Okay, I'll just go with it. Jessica, do you see there's also the parentheses, see figure 7-1 in 
in the comments. Mm -hmm. uh, do you want to get that, Jessica, and just clean that out? Is that all right? Done. Okay. So, almost done. Didn't we format right, but yeah. And then we can get rid of that sentence up there. I don't remember that RIP Professor Christensen. That's, uh, so the link that we had before, like the author took that link down and replaced it with like a dedication to Christensen. That's where the quote lives now. That's so great. Okay. So, um, I'm really happy. Uh, all right. So, I think there might be one grammar thing in here and that's it. Oh, no, your mom's story is fine. Uh, so I agree with you here on second reread. Um, if you read the last comment that I've got there, can we just put the word prototype in there to make it super obvious? Yeah. If you have a big idea, figure out a way to prototype it. There you go. Can I resolve these comments then? Yeah. Is that okay? Okay. Yeah, I think so. Um, okay. So now we're going to have, we have to have a quick little recap on the difference between an MVP and a prototype. I'm not sure if you read the comment, Sarah. No, I didn't see the comment. I don't, I, I might have written it in my dreams. No, you did, you did, you did. You said that a prototype can be an MVP, but an MVP doesn't necessarily have to be a prototype. I actually experimented with that line in several places. <laughs> but I didn't put it, I didn't end up putting it in though, so. Uh, okay, yeah, it was more for you mm -hmm. because you are using them interchangeably mm -hmm. and you're seeing that thing that we did for Jared, which was a website Mm -hmm. Remember the trade of the day? I yeah. think in a couple places you put it as a prototype when it was not a prototype. Mm -hmm. It was definitely an MVP. Okay. Right? Because when I think about a prototype, it's not something that is uh, that you release to the wild. Mm -hmm. Like they, they made a, a mini website with HTML code and CSS and comps. It was a website. Mm -hmm. There was nothing prototypey about it, um, right? It wasn't an, a simulation. It was an actual thing, and so mm -hmm. it counted as MVP. And so when we talk about the trade to stuff, it's talking about MVPs. But now you can do, you can actually like create, use an, a prototype as an MVP. But trade to was not a prototype. Now, so what you're trying to say in this story is how you built an MVP, but now we're in a world where you wouldn't have even had to build the MVP, you could have prototyped it. Not, uh, uh, to, in this, for his thing, mm -hmm. what we would have done is we would have done what we're doing in chapter nine. We would have done a landing page in Unbound right. in 20 right. minutes. Right. Instead of, instead of fighting with his developers for six weeks over a two page website. Right. Right. Um, so, you know, the unbounce, the landing page would have been considered a, a, the MVP. Right. So that's why it's like, like when we think about rapid experimentation, this chapter is setting up this idea first of like why we're doing things as experiments, why they need to be rapid because we need to learn quickly, and, you know, in, a, in an efficient and affordable manner. Mm -hmm. And then it's like, what is, prototyping, what is rapid prototyping, and how to set up a prototype for different types of experiments is explained in the next two chapters, one for qual and the second one for quant. Right. I think I'm just taking some notes here, down, down some notes here, because I think what I'm going to do when I go through and read the comments that you changed is to, that could be helpful stuff. So, um, so let's see. So before we kind of go back and forth on what this title, this used to be how I became an experiment addict, which I would love it to go back to being. Cause I don't know why. Yeah. Let me, hold on. I'm just moving the screen here. Cause I want to read 
what you approved so I can see what's going on. Yeah. Hi. I'm sorry? I'm not done until 5 p.m. Oh, yeah. Sure I'm sure it's right. Thank you so much. But I'll take care of it. Thank you very much. The door will lock behind you. Okay, so. Changed completely. All right, so. Let's, so the, the thing with this, we have two stories in a row. We have my mom's story, then we have the story about how I became an addict and introducing people to lean startup principles in, in a real sense, like that, you know, that the old way and not even the, and, and still the way in many countries that are a little bit further behind, you know, California. Yeah. Uh, that with waterfall methodology that there wasn't this, um, you know, agile way of, of releasing things incrementally. And mm -hmm. so this is setting up like all of a sudden this book comes out and people, and you know, in, in our, in our case, it changed our process. As you remember, I think you were there. Right. And then on top of that, Jared was all keen on writing experiments. Yes, I do remember that. I'm just, I'm going back in the Google document and seeing where your changes are. Um, cause it, it seems like it's, if it's just the terminology, then that that's fine. And that makes sense. We got rid of the site map map I see. And I see that. Yeah. I got rid of the app map. That was a good catch. It didn't need to be there. Yeah. And then the chat, and then I see the challenge was to isolate and prototype so that you kept the prototype there. Wait, where? Um, I'm seeing, let me go back to where you're at. I, I, there shouldn't be the word prototype in the Jared story at all. I'm doing a highlight in the text where the prototype still exists. I know that's just like a, a placeholder uh, title because you wanted prototype in there, even though it didn't. No, no, scroll, scroll down where it says the challenge was to isolate and prototype a slice of the UX that would truly test the value proposition. Right. Did we have prototype? That I'm trying to see if I'm assuming I added that. Yeah. I think I added that. So you, it looks like in the last edit that was accepted or yeah. that was a mistake. Okay. Challenges to isolate a slice of the U of the UX that would truly test the value proposition. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so do we need to look at your rewrite? The most difficult part to determine is how they yes. would use. I, I still want us to do that because I'm not so much. I mean, it'd be easier if we just had these in the body and so I could look at them on top of each other. Um, I did it because it's a large one and that way you can look at it side by side and you wouldn't get freaked out by all the green crossing out and comments. That's why I did it that way. So if you go to the top of the page, there's a bullet, an anchor link to the how I became an experiment addict. That's the rewrite part. Why is it not clicking to it? I don't know. Can we just going forward just put them in the body? Okay. Because I like to kind of right go there. like this. It's rare that I put my windows side by side because I'm looking at notes and I don't have room. Okay. Um, so this would be from after that paragraph to the end of that section. Okay. I, I don't see it. Can we just cut out what we need to look at and put it into the other one? It's because I did a lot of um, editing and I rearranged stuff. So I, we have to read through this whole thing? Mm -hmm. That's what I was assuming. So again, there's prototype there, so that's not the term you want. So that should be NDP. I 
can't change it. Oh, sorry. Let me give you eyes. Let me give you all access. I'm just gonna change it so anyone with the link. Okay, um, refresh it, and then you can change it. Uh, Did you refresh the screen? Uh, okay. I can't find it. You're almost there. I think it was just loading. There it is. There it is. Right there. He acted as a concierge, not a mediator. You say, con you use mediator in the original paragraph, and then later you say concierge when you get to your sidebar. But that's what he does. Okay, so you want us to just plop it in there? I think there's a little bit more underneath that. Hold on. No. Uh, nope, that's it. Okay, never mind. Yeah, that's the section. Yeah, if that's that section's cool with you all, then yes, that would be my suggested edit. Well, I can't tell the difference because they're on two different pages. So I have to put it in there and look at it when, uh... No, it's not at the top of the list. It goes to where the comment starts. It's supposed to roll down a little bit. Right, a little, go a little up. to where I've, I'm highlighting the comment, which is where the edit starts, it's right there. So it would replace everything after, in this comment and everything after it would replace that section. I mean, just tell me what you did. There's no way I can figure this out. It would take too much time. Um, what, what I did. And why you did. Was, first thing I did was I took part of the, if you scroll underneath the image, there's another highlighted comment. You can see me highlighting. Mm -hmm. I took parts of that and I added it into the original first paragraph. Then I split that first paragraph into two so that it is describing what you guys did. And then we had over one weekend, Jared and I sat side by side and knocked out all the documentation for trade of the day. And we show what that looks like. And then based on those two paragraphs, I, I then rearrange them to create a new ending paragraph. By taking and saying that Jared concierge did, I put him in the in the lat in the paragraph underneath the images instead of in the first paragraph. Yeah. I just did it for clarity and to help people understand what was going on. All right. Well, I I don't know what's going on. Are we losing this part here? But then Jared made the experiment more intense. No. So it's just an update to some. Paragraphs? Yep. All right, I can't, it's beyond my comprehension. Um, 
Jessica, why don't you look at it and decide what to do with it? Okay. Okay. Um, all right. So. So geez. here we have, again, where I put participate in the prototype as opposed to test. So one thing Jessica and I were talking about while you were gone was just that the use of the word experiment, prototype, and NVP kind of being used interchangeably. And I, that's probably where a lot of my edits are coming from. And so just a decision on all of us being clear on what is be, what to use. Okay. So I just rejected it. He, okay. That everybody on the team, all of us had to test this by coming up with goods or services to trade. Okay. All right. Um, all right. Defining experiments today. So I honestly didn't realize that that was at the top of the chapter because readers don't necessarily read the quotes at the top. So <laughs> it's just like, oh, okay. Okay. So we can get rid of this. Yep. Okay. All righty. Um, that's your comment. So that's for you and Jessica to decide. Oh yeah, that's later. Okay, buzzword terminology. So this is the next one that I have got in that document, which may be the main thing that I'm suggesting that we do here is that the It's not really a sidebar. This is actually important information that belongs in the body of the text. Because the the buzzword it's the sidebar is not so much about the buzzword terminology as actually telling you important common related terms about experiments that we'll see appear in the book from here on out and that will also call back to Jared and to the prototypes that are coming up. So basically, if you go and look at that document that I had, I took it out of the sidebar and I turned it into a bullet list, did a bunch of grammatical sentence editing in there as well. So that's the main thing that is going on for that section. I also took the buzzword terms and the part where you talk about that the tech industry gets frustrating about that and added it into the main body paragraph. And I wrote a concluding paragraph because there isn't one at the end of the bullet list if that's what it becomes. Jessica, what do you think? What? Sorry, I was comparing these two. You're talking about taking out the buzzword sidebar and putting it into the text? Yeah. Um, I think the, the reason that we put it into a sidebar to begin with is because like none of these, well, aside from maybe smoke test, because Volkswagen calls their experiment a smoke test, but aside from that, none of these are things that we'll continue to discuss in the book. This is more of like, if you're interested in what other kinds of experiments are out there, here they are. Um, and if you skipped over this section entirely, but like I you could keep here, reading the book. It actually helped my understanding of the chapter a lot more because it helped me understand the high level perspective that we're coming at when it comes to experiments. And then as we move into prototyping. So if you like- How did it help your high level understanding of experiments? Like what part of it helped with that? All, all of it, because concierge refers to Jared, the smoke test is going to refer to Volkswagen, the explainer test is also a Jared callback. And it goes to, if you scroll down a little bit to the bottom, it's also a good transition into the idea of a prototype, which is that all of these things are experiments that are meant to be rapid and they're meant to get information back as soon as possible. So when the so what it's doing is it's helping us understand that Tradia is one example of how this could go down, but there are many ways and we're going to help focus in on a very specific type of testing. Um, so are you talking about like that paragraph? Uh, let me scroll back down. A word of it. Okay, so 
an experimental simulation which persons believe that was this actually a four line quote yeah it was i i was editing it before i realized it was a four line quote so <laughs> i ideally um i was editing it down for understanding and to make it easier to digest so i would recommend going with the edit instead of wait i just want to hit a chat i just want to move fast so what's the deal replace go back and put the old one back here or just accept this just accept it would be my ideal okay um and then what Explain how this is different. What is uh, it different, or is it the exact same thing as Wizard of Ozing? So that's how a lot of these are. Like a lot of these are. That was kind of the point of the little intro paragraph, where it's like there's a bunch of trendy things, some some of which already have a name. Like some things are just like slightly different, and then they rename it something. Yeah, I, I like interchangeably. Like, that's why it's like it doesn't. For us to say this is that and not that then someone's gonna argue, but it is that, you know? So we're just giving examples from history, you know, like J.F. Kelly invented Wizard of Ozing. When Hannibal Turk came from here, smoke texts came from here. We're just giving them like a history of where these terms come from and what they mean. I guess like the way that it's written and especially in the paragraphs is it sounds like these are specific examples like you have the line of like, these are common terms that are related to conducting experiments, but you didn't necessarily say these are common terms that are used interchangeably to say, say the same kind of experiment. And then what when here? Describe, it sounds like that they're different. Wait, what about this sentence? even interchangeable terms? Then there's the last one of however some terms have staying power and I've compiled a list of the ones that relate to conducting value proposition experiments. And then when I read it, it makes it seem like they're different. Because okay, so much so is going into them. I, I don't know what to do. Uh, they're used interchangeably. They're used wrongly. Um, they're buzzwordy. All that is tr totally true. Um, I'm fine if we take it out of a sidebar. I don't care. Um, uh, I just don't want to have to do more work. We're so far behind on deadline. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's where I'm at right now. Mm -hmm. So I don't you, explain you, you as the author, make a call. Do you want to put it back into a buzzword sidebar, or do you want to leave it into the body of the text? Uh, I'm happy leaving it as it is. I just don't want to answer any more questions about explaining anything anymore. So then I think there's probably just some a little bit of reframing word wise that we have to do, but we can keep moving forward. Is this something where Jessica, you want to go and just take a look at it and? help us make the decision or would you take a, take a look at how it looks in the text versus how it looks out of the text no just like what do you or i guess like what's your instinct vote go back to the buzz my, my instinct sidebar. vote is to leave it in a buzzword sidebar and rename the sidebar so it sounds more directly tied to experiments and not my that. quick answer then let's do that so go ahead and put a comment in the um active document yeah, that that's what the decision is. And I'm going to go back because there's a lot of grammatical things in there I did. I'm yep. going to go back in and I'll make that work. OK, got it. Sounds good. OK, all right. So let's, let's keep going. OK, then um, in that same document, I did a lot of reorganizing as well. So you're in that document again for rapid prototyping for value proposition. Wait, I mean, I have to go back to your document now? Yeah. So for rapid prototyping down to some popular tools, I did a restructure as well of the paragraphs where I took lines from later paragraphs and combined them to earlier paragraphs and just tried to make the flow more concise and get rid of some redundancies. All right. So it's just these. Um, I just have to take this section, right? Let's see. I can't see on your Zoom. It's not showing me. Hold on. I'm looking at the document. Yeah, that's it. 
Okay, and then, and then I'm that's gonna... the end of the big stuff I did in that document. There's nothing else to take. Up. There's nothing else. Okay, so I'm going to take this and put it in it and take this out. Do we need to make a copy or we're just going to go for it? Sorry. You can just go for it. You can just go for it. It stops right here. It's choppy know. for me. I'm still looking so at it there. Like I you guys. Yeah, Jamie, you're cutting out. Um, what should I do? Try to go back to my network. Okay, I'm gonna pause. Oh no, that didn't work. Am I choppy, or is it just Jamie, Jessica? It's just Jamie. It's just Jamie. Okay, so I'm confused. Where where are we at, guys? So we are we're at looking at rapid prototyping. Mm -hmm. Are we skipping that? Yeah, I, at, Sarah. <laughs> it's just um, you're you're taking a look at the document and seeing what to bring over, and then you and Jamie can make that decision. But otherwise, for comments and for efficiency, we can just move to four steps to rapidly prototyping the value proposition, which is at the gotcha. the bottom yeah, step so right there at the page. So the idea is that paragraph that I was trying to move over real move over offline. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we're here at four steps to rapidly prototyping a value proposition. Yep. So this what comment is, go ahead. Go ahead. I was gonna say this comment here is more just for us to remember when we finish all the edits of like when we have a chance to look at my recommendations and thoughts on chapter six. If it all still makes sense, then we can just resolve this comment and it's fine. <laughs> yeah, but I don't understand. In, in chapter six, that's where we talk about key experiences. And, and so it's not moving to any other chapter. So no, no, it, it went just like it. I think it, I think it's fine, but it's more just a note to remember to check it out when we have a chance to after we have a chance to talk about chapter six. Okay. Mm -hmm. No big crazy things are being done structurally in chapter six. <laughs> I, know, I just don't under, I'm trying to resolve your notes so that we can be done with stuff and okay. And go ahead and resolve it because I'll catch it on the copy edit again if that if it's an issue. Okay, so um, Let's see. The movie, if movie put in italics. This is a really nitpicky grammar class element. <laughs> Blade Runner is a character, right? <laughs> I've never seen Blade Runner. Truth. It's a movie. But isn't a character in the movie? Probably, but it's, I mean, first and foremost, it's a movie. Okay, so why did you want to remove, and it's no problem, if she wanted to stretch her creative abilities. It just was a long run on sentence and I felt like we got to the point faster if we cut it out and just said at this point, this is where Jessica is. Okay, so. Because obviously that's what she is doing. So we don't have to state it. Um, uh, well, the point that we're making is that she's doing something where there is, where it's futuristic. But that's what the Blade Runner sentence does, of like, it's about booking autonomous flying shuttles. Yes, think Blade Runner. We're in the future. There is no marketplace. Got it. Okay. Thank you. No, you're right. Okay. So at this point in our process, and you know, we, uh, whatever the word is for uh, making an attempt to oblige your comment, Thank you. I appreciated it. <laughs> you wanted you wanted us to write out the steps. Mm -hmm. uh, why? I mean, does this make it any better? 
Yeah, it's just table setting because we've never met Jessica. And so we just, this is just clarifying that she's been going through the process on her own project. She's a student and this is what you teach. And so we're just catching people up and being like, and she did the storyboard, like where you're at. Got it. Okay. Yeah. Um, so it doesn't matter that what we, we say that she learned from her analysis or Uber Air or yeah. whatever. She did it. She has this information. Go. She's, she's not going into this blank is the main point of saying these things. It's yeah. like she's not starting at the prototype. She's done her due diligence. She's here for a reason. I think Uber Air is a biggest competitor is fine because again, it puts to the futuristic like competitor thing and it's a nice little detail. Specificity is always good. Okay, because I was thinking maybe we could put that it was that she she didn't realize her value innovation was around. We have this whole thing back and forth where she tested uh, people using it for commuting versus fun, um, but we don't need to add that. Okay. No, not important here. Okay, she did her competitive. So meet Jessica the bunny. You can see that exemplar. So there's her thing. As you can see, la 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 la. Okay, so then I start your engines, which I want to delete, but you have all this stuff. Uh, it's choppy. We're not going to say she rolled up her sleeves. We already went get her hand. I already used get hands dirty twice now. Yeah, so I would get rid of start your engines because to have both is like saying. Right, I want to get rid of both. Can I just, this whole comment go away or do I have to go with. You? Get rid of start your engine and then you can get rid of the comments. Okay, that's great. I love that. All right, goodbye. Okay, um, write a prototype outline. Uh, here's the general frameworks of prototype screens and their content. Did you mean context? Is that the correct word? Because no. Because context, the, when you're writing the outline, you're not necessarily figuring out what the content is. It's the context and what goes on the prototype screen, right? like the general framework and framework could mean context here or maybe we just said like here's the general framework of the prototype screens period and then we don't have to deal yeah, with that maybe so like i don't know what the heck it was what we were thinking or what i was thinking i think it's better as it is yeah um recall okay so this is easy um, okay, so then it's just like, uh, next, next arriving, sorry to be something here to do with your copy edits. Um, so actually here, just a quick question, Jessica, were you using Figma or Adobe XD? Adobe XD. Okay. So I did a rewrite here cause I thought that you were using Figma. So I would just say, let's get rid of this because it's such a kind of small throwaway detail to say Figma's frames and to call it out. I just don't even think it's necessary. Just create blank artboards to for each screen in the outline since we should always try to build prototypes in the most likely format, blah, 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 and just delete all that. Okay, so you don't think it matters that, because sketch and XD use artboards and Figma uses frames. Yeah, I mean, they do. But I would say if you're going to say frames, then I'd go back up to the tools sidebar that you have there and call it out and say. Right. Also, I wouldn't, consider, I wouldn't consider Figma a prototyping tool. I'd consider it a wireframing tool, but I could be wrong. I mean, I've used it for prototypes. Figma is currently my favorite tool. Yay, Figma. But it definitely has its issues that don't make it great for prototyping. I just think like it's, it's, yeah, put it in the toolbar where we have Figma. If you want, we can just cut and paste it up there and say like a browser based design program. It leverages vector networks and frames to allow for the easy creation of icons and designs. But it's just not important enough here. Wait, I'm not sure what I'm using your prototype tool to try create. So do you want me to get rid of or frames in Figma for each yep. screen in the outline? I just don't think it's important enough. Because it's, 
you know, Figma goes away, then it's just like so dated. And we talked about earlier how there's, you know, buzzwords and terminology and obviously programs and platforms come up with their own way of saying things for branding and to distinguish themselves and just like dark words. <laughs> yeah. Since we could always, since we should always try to prototype in the most likely format in which users will experience them, build prototypes. Uh, that doesn't make sense. So this is the line that you had earlier that I've brought, I brought down here. Because uh, this is where it seemed to make more sense since we're actually talking about how you're building it. And it's relevant. Right. I don't mind the movement. It's more that what it says in it may not be you. Mm -hmm. It's, it, it's, 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 you're, you're using the right aspect ratio. Oh, did I get rid of aspect by accident? I don't know, but I mean, that's the right screen ratio. The right screen ratio. Yeah, she didn't get rid of that. That's down here. Okay, so in the mo build in the most likely format is is desktop versus mobile a format? That was in the original sentence. I'm going to accept her change so we can just edit the sentence. Is that okay? Okay. Okay. I'm just going to change this using the most likely screen ratio. I'll just get all the text in there. in which the users were, i.e. Um, make sure you choose, uh, oh, I see. Okay, so we could just, duh. I don't know why we need to try to build prototypes. Yeah, we don't want to try. We can just say. Why can't we just say you should use a, always choose the right screen ratio, which the users, you know. You yeah, I like it. Definitive, active, yeah. it would be better to do that, especially when we're giving steps. I just say oh, always use the proper screen ratio for the device you intend to show the prototype on. Yeah, that's what it should say. Can you just make it fit? Yeah. It's so hard for, and I'll go into the next one. Search online for free UI toolkits. Okay, that's correct. So search online for free UI toolkits of elements or even entire screens to speed up your prototyping. Volkswagen. Hi. Hi, Jimmy. Hi. Hey, it's me, me. How are you? I'm good. How about you? That's great. Yeah. So, yeah, I got a message. Uh, I was over to you that you called me, so how can I help you? Oh, um, I dropped off my Golf again. To, well, I ended up re repairing the windshield on my own a couple of weeks ago, but then uh, last week the window, hey, uh, the button to put down the driver's side and window stopped function. That paragraph, I, I think I had a comment that was like, Jessica chose and, clean. You know, I think it's just a small part that device. needs to be replaced, but they're telling me that it needs to, I have to pay a $50 deductible and I'm just not feeling that good about that.
Yeah, I understand that. But, you know, I just got this car from you a few weeks ago and it's like slowly falling apart. And You know, because I could, if I have to pay $50, I'll order the part for $5 on the internet and just have a handyman install it. You know? The, the button to turn, to make the window go down isn't functioning. That's all. Can you, can you just talk to them and they could tell you what, what the problem is since I don't know. I just know that I can't have, the window won't go down. I don't know, Enon or Enon or something. I'm sorry. I don't know. There was no office. I was just sitting. I mean, I'm in your system. If you could just look it up. Here it is. Uh, I got it. Uh, um, Leon. No, I mean. Got it. Okay, so Leon. Thank you so much. That's great. I appreciate that. Bye bye. Blah. All right. Okay. That, that's perfect. <laughs> cool. Did we just clean a whole bunch of garbage up? Yeah. We're just making little edits. Um, there's an extra period in there, Jessica. Oh. For commuters who would be using the app on the go. Oh, I see. You don't like a period just in the middle of a sentence? Not a good spot for it. Uh oh, did I just screw up? What happened? Oh, yeah, in the image. Jessica has three examples, and we only mentioned two. Um, yeah, what's up with that, Jessica? Yes, Jessica totally put this in there. What's up? What, what about Plotastic? Oh, Jesus. Why do we, wait, what's, what, there's two? I'll fix it, I'll fix it. Just give me a second. <laughs> What about potastic? No. Weirdly enough, not relevant. There. Okay, right, perfect. That's amazing. The power of cropping. And then this second sentence right here above the image, I just didn't understand what that was saying. Which one? Uh, so we can say, okay, yeah. that. So she was able to pull components from search results from sky and directions and maps from Navigo. Are we saying like from Google, you Googled in? No, from the toolkits. The toolkits themselves. The okay. Toolkits. okay, so she decided to use it. And then let's just do this. Since they were both dicking, she was We can probably, probably conflate those two sentences or combine them or whatever. Yeah. yeah, that's what I'm thinking. It's just a little thing. Because I don't know if, I feel like we're kind of promoting stupid toolkits, you know? Then maybe we could just do something where we don't have, because the image promotes the specific toolkit. So it's just Jessica decided to use toolkits that dealt with booking and transportation, or booking transportation. She was able to search directly inside each toolkit for relevant components. Yeah, for components like. Well, she was able to pull components, period, not right. search. There's no searching. It makes it sound like you're doing a command find. That's what it seemed like to me. That's why I have this question. 
Wait, you know, you open the toolkit and you go and you look for an interaction pattern, and you, you grab it. It's been a while since I've used an interactive component a toolkit, honestly. <laughs> she was able to pull components directly. She was able to directly pull components from it. Ooh, what happened? What did I do? Directly pull components from them. Okay. Oh, sorry. I think I accidentally accepted your comment <laughs> as you were writing it. All right, there you go. Sorry, I'll, I'll just accept these since we're agreeing with them. Yep, 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 yep. Now we won't have to worry about it. Okay. And then I would put here is this, this was a, just like a sample of Adobe XD toolkits that Jessica used. used. Yeah. There you go. Accept it. Why is it accepting? It's accepted on that side. There we go. Oh, that was weird. I like put it in twice. There we go. Okay, so that's good. Okay, almost done with the chapter, ladies. Hooray! And maybe these can be centered or bigger or whatever. It's not important now. Yeah, we'll come back for that. Okay. Uh, for each art board, place any UI elements that work from your collected toolkits. Next, arrange them. So basically, we're telling them to do what she just did. Mm -hmm. If I accept this, will it just put the correct one in? No. You have to copy paste it in. Uh, okay. What do I do? You're able to ensure. able to accomplish their action as described in your prototype outline. Is that it? That's it. Yep, and then we just delete this part. Gone. Okay, adjust the colors, formatting, fonts, and etc. <laughs> Where are you? Allowed to do that, Sarah, and say and etc. to make the design feel cohesive, or do we want? I don't even see that on my document. Yeah, you don't see that. Oh wait, there it is. Like, yeah. <laughs> we uh, don't even yeah, and the third thing or etc. etc. Et because um, it wasn't in dashes, and that way it feels more like a list. What if we just said adjust? Wait, are you? Are you fighting for it or you, can we just say adjust the colors, formatting? And fonts to make the design feel more cohesive? Yeah, can that just be enough? Sure. Yeah, yeah totally I'll change it. <laughs> okay. Check relevant screen pages. Okay. Whoa. Benchmark your design against relevant screens and pages from competitors or UX influencers so you don't leave out anything important. Is that what you're doing? Benchmarking? Kind of. I'm afraid to introduce benchmark here. Well, in the other chapters, we're benchmarking in a strategy way. And here we're not we could still just like this is still a nicer sentence or rewrite. We can just say check your design against right. relevant screens or something. That's fine. Does that work? Okay. Wait. I'll update it. You can keep going. I'm already doing it. Like, oh, okay. <laughs> Check. Yeah, I'm afraid to use benchmark again. Then let's not do it. Or we don't, is there another word for compare that's fancy? Check, compare, um, juxtapose. <laughs> I think check is fine. I mean, the main thing was, is I was just cleaning up the sentence because it was kind of wordy. Okay, all right. Um, always preview the blah, blah, blah on your device to make certain the graphics are proportion or, uh, and are proportionally correct. Do we need to say and readable or is that proportionally? Okay, yeah, proportionally correct to me means that they're readable because proportionally they must be readable. Yeah. 
then proceed to the next screen until all the screens in your outline are complete. Yay. Okay, then you move to, sounds great. Um, now we have figure 710, I bet. Uh, uh, so what happened? Where'd the paragraph go? Oh, wait, no, we're fine. Okay. Never mind. I just moved, yeah, I just moved under the image. I just so put all these paragraphs above the image just for consistency's sake across like the four steps, but we can put it underneath. It's just when I was reading through, it just made more sense flow wise to me to say these things because this is kind of like a following up of details after I've seen sure. the elements and it's calling out important stuff. Um, this is a suggested rewrite of the whole paragraph. Sounds good. Uh, let me put it next to it. It's just missing the part about looking at comparing it to other apps. Yes, I didn't feel it was necessary because it just seemed to be adding more words and taking us away from the point that you could do it. Okay. Yeah. You could do, she grabbed some maps from Google Earth or, you know, she compared maps between, you know, Google Maps, Uber and Lyft and then decided on Google Earth. I just kind of put it, folded in there so it doesn't take so much space and attention. It says twice though, filled in, added a few extra touches and filled in gaps, but without reinventing. It, uh, this is weird to me because mm -hmm. I get that you're saying, but without reinventing the will. If she was to reinvent the will, she would have just done the whole thing from scratch. Right. What I'm trying to say in the sentence, and let's definitely smooth it out so it says that, is that if she went the extra nine yards by not reinventing the wheel, but just taking screenshots from Google Earth and changing the color so it looked like it wasn't generic. Can we just change this to say to avoid reinventing the wheel? Oh yeah, perfect. There you go. Uh, and filled in. What do you mean filled in gaps? I added that. I wasn't sure if it was being redundant or not. I'm fine taking that out. I mean, if we, why, why, and how about we just add the, and filled in missing content? That's fine with me. And then we get mm -hmm. rid of the last sentence. Actually, this is, let's, um, I'm gonna stop suggesting here just so that we don't have to deal with accepting my edits. And fill in innocent. Let's do this. I feel like to avoid reinventing the wheel, she now she grabs some maps from Google Earth. <laughs> I don't know. Um, you mean? I know what you're trying to say. Yeah. But it, uh, grabbing some maps is not reinventing. I think of reinventing the will as just doing something from scratch. And it, so. I think this is just a carryover from like in my original thing I wrote at the end, it said to avoid reinventing the wheel and make sure she didn't leave anything out. She visited these other apps. I was just talking about like not reinventing right. like what it means to book a ride or something like that but we don't need to keep this phrase in. I have no emotional attachment to this phrase. <laughs> I know. I'm I'm just... Take it out yeah that's fine. It, it, it goes with somewhere else it doesn't make sense here. Yeah. Sounds good. Now we have like a, a short she added and filled in Is that okay to have that weird statement? She grabs some maps from Google Earth. And now it just seems like an odd sentence. How about we, we just go, let me just fix it. Such as maps. Yeah. From Google Earth. 
Mm -hmm. She also made the toolkit elements look less generic by matching them to her chosen uh, color scheme and fonts. That sounds great. So now we can delete this big paragraph above. Three heads are better than one, ladies. <laughs> Okay. Lady heads. Did you know that most of the people that work in O'Reilly are chicks? And awesome. publishing is a female dominated industry. Publishing? Mm -hmm. What did you say was female dominated? The sex publishing. industry? I think there's lots of female editors and female um, women in publishing. It's awesome. Uh, mm -hmm. So this All is right. um, so, coming in here is probably for Jessica. What I couldn't figure out in your prototype outline what the exact title of this card page was. What is the, whoa. Oh, I'm a little further down. I just focus focused on animating the route details card. What name is this in her prototype outline? Excellent question. I just put it in caps, exactly how you have it in the outline. I use the exact same title. Oh, this was like, um, so this wasn't a particular screen. This was like a, like a, a, a detail kind of pop up that was at the bottom of a bunch of screens. So then this goes to another comment that I have of like, we're showing the full kind of crazy animated prototype and how you're doing it. But here actually what would be most helpful is just a image of that detail so that I can see what you're talking about. Just like a, a screenshot of what that card looked like. Yeah, I think like it's actually interesting to have this, but really the information that I need here is I'm not sure what you're calling out. And so as you can see, I was like, wait, wait which prototype screen was this? And where am, where am I in this huge screen? Wait, so can we just move the figure? If, you know, do we, are you saying, okay, what's your preference? The easy fix is we just move the figure call out to somewhere that just says there's a stupid reference to uh, yeah, I guess like let's move figure 711 above this paragraph because this paragraph is specifically calling out a detail in that figure. I can move so that. Which paragraph, where should it fit then and make it flow above? Where are we talking about? Are we anywhere where you're saying drawing lines in XD? You think like you have all your screen design, animations are necessary. I think maybe just after the first paragraph because it's like, Animation can range from simple to complex simulations. And that way we can see how it's, what it looks like. And then the next paragraph is about how you wanna make sure that you build workarounds so that people can flow through the prototype. I don't think this figure illustrates anything that's mentioned in here. No, Other than no, no programming required. Oh, that's funny. If we just put it there. That, wait, hold on. I really like that idea. If we just put it. <laughs> <laughs> Look, mom, no programming required. See figure 711. Proof. I mean, and it shows just a bunch of lines. Do, do we need to say. That sounds great. Do we say, we need to say, look, mom, no programming required, just a bunch of linking or Look, mom, no programming required. I think just leave oh, it. Look, mom, no programming required. Okay. Yeah, Jessica's link proto. Even though Jessica does have a master's in data science and could code. I have useless degrees in computer science and engineering. So, no, I like, I still like things that require no programming. <laughs> and she has a creative writing minor from. CGU, Sarah. Hey, hey. Isn't she a great find? Yeah, totally. I'd say, Jessica, that being a writer and a UX person is like a very rare combination that makes us super interesting. <laughs> I like it. It's fun. It's just like lots of interesting 
it's just a different kind of problem solving, you know? It's honestly like one of the main reasons why I get hired on gigs. Is <laughs> Writing things. Well. Articulate a sentence. But you can also tell her, sir, that, that, that I'm going to ruin her for future jobs. <laughs> I mean, to an extent, yes. Because you'll always compare all jobs to Jamie. <laughs> this is true. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, okay. So do we want another image of this route details card, or should we just take it out? What's the move? Well, so, so just in this paragraph in general, I didn't understand what route details mean. This second sentence, I was like, wait, what's happening? It felt like I didn't necessarily understand what you were trying to say. And then this last sentence, I wanted the image. So question to your group here is, do you feel this paragraph is necessary? Because the easiest thing to do would just be- I don't know. I don't think it is, but why did, did Jessica write it because you told her we needed to, or? Nope. Did I tell her? Jessica you? wrote these because Sarah said, put what Jessica did, put what Jessica for each of the steps. There, <laughs> so I just see, threw a paragraph in there. Jessica just, just hey. like, so we tried it, and if it doesn't work, that's fine. <laughs> this was not me being like, God, I just wish I could tell everyone about what details I animated. Um, then let's just do this, because I like to have a paragraph or a little bit to close off an image. Is Can we just keep the last sentence to close out the section? Incorporated a modal? Yeah. <laughs> we should also incorporate a modal to explain what to look for when getting because I think it's just kind of fun to also end on the fantastic sci-fi note of it all and that like Jessica was really doing some futuristic stuff by using this process. Is it okay. not just going to be like a weird like floating sentence at the end? <laughs> like I'd rather end on like look mom no programming required. <laughs> all right then. Yeah. then just then take it out take it out. Kill it be it's gone. We want it yeah we want it to end on a strong thing on a kind of like contentious ad. Oh wow, this is looking good. So this dot 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 here is actually the chapter seemed to re end really abruptly in my mind because we were really focused in on a step. And so I kind of, if we could do something like how we ended chapter three, I think that would be really good. Of just like we're as like a film, like we were zoomed in really close, so at the end of a film is a zoom out. So, of just kind of like you know, she finished the prototype. Now she, you know, if she's here, she'll do A. If she's here, she'll do B. If this is an MVP, uh, move on to chapter nine. <laughs> wait. Except there's not a bunch of like options. It's basically yeah. like go to chapter eight. That's all it is, Sarah. Yeah. Now she's ready to start putting it in front of users. Uh, even like maybe just three sentences like that, like congratulations, Jessica's finished the prototype and you have two, now you're ready to show it to users. Move on to chapter eight. Like, or actually the thing is, the questions here are just like, how long did it take you? Because that's the point, right? It's a rapid prototype. Jessica finished this in an afternoon yeah. uh. <laughs> or whatever it was. <laughs> Uh, okay, um, this is not what we need to put, I'm just putting something here while we think out loud. Sorry, Jessica, what'd you say? I said this is not what we need to write, I'm just putting something as we think out loud. Yeah, you and Jessica finished your prototypes, it didn't take you, you know, a million dollars and three days, four days and a team of 20. You're ready to go forth and, you know, launch your experiment or whatever it is. You got that, Jessica, or do I need to write it? Oh yeah, your screen's like a little delayed. Great. I already wrote it. Wow, okay. I've gotten used to it from you just reading from books to me and then I just transcribe them for notes. Wait. <laughs> Oh, there's a bunch of um, recap stuff down there. Got it. Okay, so now, you got look, now it's time to set up your first experiment. Now you're ready to go forth and launch your experiment. There you go. Move that sentence up there. I like that better. Really? It's just, just like, I felt like in between the recap and this, it just felt really abrupt. We needed to pan Yeah, but, but all our recaps end with, hey, now go do this, go there. 
Okay, then leave it there. But now it's repetitive. Yeah, no, it definitely is. I still am say I still am voting for the fact that we need some sort of paragraph or something in between the end of step four and the recap. I don't know what the answer is. Yeah, we can just like say something like you, uh, congratulations, you and Jessica finished your prototypes, didn't take thousands of dollars or weeks to complete or a team of developers. Um, like, and we just need like one more sentence or so that says like, you know, now you have something you can put in front of real users to start gathering feedback or something like that. Yeah. Doesn't have to be like experiments, ho, like let's go. Yeah, um, it didn't, um, I'm wondering if. Uh, hey, how about something it, about like. Um, and I'm going back to your old draft. There was some line. Show, how about the show before? I mean, she needs to test it out. Jessica is going to test it out on her mom. Because <laughs> she's one of those boomerang kids. <laughs> I don't know that my mom ever saw this. <laughs> uh, her mom to make, but um, um, before. No, because you just said, "Look, mom, no programming." How <laughs> about <laughs> um, I mean? So now we need to tell them that they need to. So now Jessica is gonna idiot test it, or foolproof it, or test drive it. I was trying to say something about like what we have at the end of this chapter rather than like where we're going because that's what you're saying is like then it sounds repetitive with the recap right yeah just like um yeah like again if we look at the example on three uh, for chapter three it's not we don't have to use that same kind of structure but it's a moment of like take a breath this is where you are this is you know everything that you kind of learned from this and now we're moving forward or would be a better reference, one that goes to another chapter versus step, you have three choices at this point. Mm -hmm. Let me just see what's in there. Um, I, I do think that, you know, that we could say, Jessica, that the next step is for her to test, you know, have her friends test it out before, you know, or maybe do we talk I feel like about that's confusing with where we go in chapter eight? Wait, maybe you're actually thinking of chapter five, Jamie, that it's time to take a stand. Both of them. Or they the one last note. Four or five are ones that go in a linear fashion to the next one. So I just want to see what the ending is. Mm -hmm. uh, but Jessica, I don't know. I think in five is where we say that you should test it on your roommate or something before putting in front of users or so we don't need to have you test it on your mom or whatever. Yeah, I think it's like something like I wrote a sentence like now you have something you can put out there in front of actual users to start getting feedback or something like that. Like something that says like what they have at this point. Like now that they've completed this chapter, here's what you have in hand as opposed to like here's where you're gonna go next. Cause then that's what we say immediately after in the recap. Yeah, that's fine. Go ahead and do that. Sounds good. Chapter four ends in a one last note. Seriously? You see how long Sarah takes me to do anything on my old computer? Oh, when they're playing the Beatles. Uh. Sarah's. What is this ending? What a terrible, terrible, it ends with a, a thing. No, it's fine because you've gone through all the parts of the competitive audit where you're telling everybody what to look for and it's just for people who are, they want to do more. They want yeah, to look right. for Okay, but that one doesn't have uh, Scroll up a little bit more. There's a one last note. About the sidebar. That's why you and you always need to be on your toes. And this is what we need, right? Something like that. Just kind of like, maybe actually that's something for this end here. Like, Jessica, like if you're working with a team, if you're, you know, making a prototype for it, just kind of like some, 
some some provisions depending on the scenario or the context of you making the prototype. Mm -hmm. Um, so we still need another line I guess, after feedback. Guys? I mean, it'd be nice, but I don't know how necessary. It's not like this whole chapter falls apart if we don't have a fourth sentence to this paragraph, oh, but... It just, it just feels like a very abrupt ending when you yeah. say before and we go to the recap, so... Let's finish the recap and come back to it. It's a mess. Mm -hmm. Okay. The moral of the story is don't burn your time, money, or efforts on a product no one may want to use. It is critical to the product strategy that you can demonstrate. And move that to the bottom of the paragraph, that sentence. Problematic word. This goes back to strategy. the email you sent me about product strategy. No, it's good. We're using it interchangeably now. Okay. Uh, but I don't know if that's the right word. It's critical. It's not critical to the product strategy. It's critical to validate the product strategy. But, you know, or it's critical in the process or it's you know, or it's critical in design thinking or iteration that you can demonstrate a prototype that seems real enough to get useful feedback. So the sentence overall seems like it's problematic. Yeah. Uh, I liked how it ended. It ends up with the way mom, my mom did it. Okay, do something to concierge the experience. If it means selling stuff out of your bedroom closet. So sandwich, remember that thing you taught me? Yeah, so actually get rid of that line and I think it's just fine actually, those two sentences and now it's time to set up our first experiment. What do you think, Jessica? I think I it looks good. I like ending on the, even it means selling stuff out of your bedroom closet. So wait a minute. I like it as it is right now, is what I meant. Okay, but so so does it should this be its own sentence, uh, own paragraph, or make it one paragraph? I think it's all one paragraph. Moral okay. of this chapter is: Don't burn your time, money, or efforts on a product no one may want to use. Do something to concierge the experience, even if it means selling stuff out of your own bedroom closet. Uh, get rid of the comma after experience. Now it's time to set up our first experiment and engage your target users in a guerrilla user research attack. Is it weird that we don't have the word prototype in here anywhere? <laughs> That's why you need the transition paragraph that we yeah. don't have. It's okay. I'll, I'll make it, I'll add it. Do something to concierge the experience. What if we took the congratulations, Jessica, paragraph and put it as the first one in the recap? So that way the recap happens and we kind of have a recap of the chapter and then we move to the next step. So take congratulations, you and Jessica finished your prototypes. The moral the of this chapter paragraph. is? The, the whole, no, no, sorry. The congratulations, you and Jessica finished your prototype, the whole paragraph that's up there. And put all of that into the recap? Yeah. Is it, but then don't we still just end on step four? Is we that okay then? At least that paragraph is now 
transitioning out. So as you were saying, like we've got kind of a place setting paragraph and then if you go into the next step, maybe that'll do it and it won't make it seem so awkward when we hit recap. Wait, Jamie, where'd the first sentence go? Until then. Okay. Wait. No congratulations. No, it went away. Uh, I'll make it come back. I can just rewrite it. It's fine. No, it's okay. There it is. Okay. 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 And I'll just paragraph and put it as the yep. first thing to recap. Maybe that'll do it. I'll just grab it and move it. Okay. Yes. Good. Paste. Do we want this sentence about now you have something you put out there in front of? We don't need that anymore, right? Because we're saying now it's time to set up our first experiment. Yeah, actually, I think that works out fine. What do you think, Jamie? Wait, so are we going to lose this whole thing here? Yeah. Unless you want that first sentence. The second sentence is something we just grabbed from the other chapter, so. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we definitely don't need that. So it was just if you wanted that first sentence, we could keep it. Otherwise, I think we've said this a million times. Yep. Uh, it takes thousands of, the moral is, is don't burn money. Do something to concierge your, the experience. Do we need product experience? No. No. User? No. Even though it means selling stuff out of your own bedroom. I hope they remember my mom's story. Now it's time to set up our first experimenting and engage our, your, what, what's going on, Sarah? We've, it's been both. In this chapter, it's been our, but otherwise we've used your. But I mean, we're using it twice, both here. Now it's time to set up our first experiment and engage your. Let's just make it your. Oh, I see. Yeah, you're saying, yeah, make it consistent. I think it's supposed to be your everywhere because that's what we do in like all the other chapters. Let's try that. Let's see how it goes. Cool. End of chapter seven comments. Yay. Yay. So, are you sure we made it through? Yeah, you and I will have to come back to some stuff, Jamie, but. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to the buzzword terminology and put all my grammatical changes and suggesting as well, Jessica. Yeah, so I put a comment. I replied to one of your comments on, yeah. the, on the title of that buzzword. Cool. Part. But all the internal stuff, I'm just going to cut and paste my grammar stuff from yeah. the suggested, and then you guys can. Yep, yep, yep. Not. Okay. And you had an earlier comment on our storyboard about that it lacked value innovation, but it has the key experiences. So you saw that, right? Um, I didn't. That comment was resolved because I don't remember making it now, so it must have been taken care of because on my read through this morning it didn't jump out at me okay yeah. I, um i'm thinking that do you think it's a bad thing to use this hand-drawn storyboard yeah. instead go back to one that we have like in six or is it good to show that you can do either it doesn't matter yeah i think so and it's a very futuristic one so again i think it's interesting that you're showing that you know as we talk about in chapter three right like a value proposition is not hard to come up with. And so we're using a process here to show that it can be validated. Um, Even if it's not, you know, using component libraries. And a storyboard also is something that isn't necessarily presented to stakeholders, so why not draw a storyboard? Exactly. Mm -hmm. And we mentioned, okay, so, but I think she should redraw them so they're more clear. Yeah, it is a little squishy. Okay, so should we look at eight or are we done with you or you haven't, I done, haven't eight? done eight? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and put in those um, grammatical changes in seven so you all can go and check those off and just get that done. And then I'm going to tackle eight and potentially, are you both meeting tomorrow? Yeah. So yeah. I'm, I'm going to try to do eight in the next 24 hours so that way we can go over eight tomorrow. Cool. Um, How does that sound? Let me yeah. make sure I'm not over promising myself. Yes, I can do that tomorrow. <laughs> okay. And I think one word of advice, uh, not advice or direction maybe. Yeah. Is 
go go easy on the rewrites of any old material. You just don't have the time. Mm -hmm. I I mean I appreciate you're making it flow, but we're like um we need to get we need to get these chapters in and you're I want to see you putting your energy to fine tuning the new material as opposed to rewriting the old material. Yep. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. And I admitted to Jessica while you were gone that I've kind of been afraid to do the new chapters because I'm less familiar with them. So I, <laughs> so you're not wrong and I will definitely embrace that. Yeah, and it's not even just time, it's budget too. Agreed, yeah. Um, you know, guess how much money I made this year? Uh, a I'm bajillion, never... obviously. I just like at my P&L. Everybody. <laughs> my P&L, $13,000. Wow. That includes royalties and one workshop. But that doesn't count USC, you know, because I'm getting so rich teaching those two classes. It's a lucrative um, career nobody knows about. So um, let me walk you through a just in case. Yeah. You get confused. So the timeline, which we're so excited about, as you know, mm -hmm. we already told you that it's just, you know it's trying to be kind of like the gorilla user research attack. It's setting up. It's setting up what the hell was going on, and they and we're gonna highlight Nico and Jessica. It's like it's like the homecoming. You know, uh, it, it's, I'm very excited. Like we're, I, we're pushing, it's also uh, uh, Edward Tufte because it's got like this information design thing going on. All right. Well, I understand um, there's a concept and I understand it's been discussed, but until I see the words on the page, I have no opinion on it. <laughs> there won't be words. This is my writer validation right here. It's like, gonna look like this, Sarah. Great, excellent. <laughs> it's gonna like it's it's a piece of artwork. Um, I believe you, but I'll hold I'll hold judgment until I see it as written, um, all completed. All right. So what we have in this headache of a chapter is some a lot of some of the old stuff, but user research. It does, you know, the whole thing of us writing going forward is like. You know, we got into this thing where we made outlines where we want to like break things down slowly. Mm -hmm. So here it's like, okay, what's the, why, why are they using the word gorilla? So we started again with the user research versus gorilla. Mm -hmm. And you tightened this up, I think, already. I saw. Yeah, I did. Okay. And then you have this discussion point that I'd love to have now if you want to tell me what it is. Uh... What did I have originally? Oh, man, it's from a month ago already. I think this, no, this, Jessica, you and I, we went over all of this, right? These discussion points, because this was just about making sure that we put in the story points for Justin, for not Justin, Miko and Jessica. The J is Jessica. <laughs> yeah. Um, we did that in some places. I think, I feel like this discussion point was about something about i don't remember if it was in this chapter or chapter nine where we were talking about it, like it being confusing that there were like phases and then steps in the phases yeah, and there's this section kind of at the beginning the of the phasing and stuff was getting a little confusing as well sorry jamie this is where i don't remember why i put this here we could also just resolve it if you look at it again and it occurs to you yeah like just i like that all yeah, right. let's resolve it at this point because I'm going to go through it again. Okay, to an extent, isn't this something we should have had at the end of chapter? No, the tool this is not... taken care of now because you also re described hypothesis in chapter seven or chapter six. Well, I chapter have seven. really yeah. defined hypothesis now. I'm just like doubling down on that one. Oh, look, hey, did you see my new style thing? I'm like Good. doing pull quotes. Wait till O'Reilly sees. I bet every author is going to copy me. There you go. <laughs> I'm cool with that. Yeah, but cool. now we have to go back when we do the big rewind of Sarah, as Jessica and I are calling it and go back to chapter one, we're going to have to put pull quotes in other chapters. Mm -hmm. They can't just like 
all of a sudden appear at chapter yeah. eight, you know. Every chapter needs at least one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Agreed. We'll find them. I'll write them. I'll say something obnoxious. It'll be hard. All right, so we have our analysis phase. We, we did this in the first book, and it's kind of annoying, but it, it's like our way of giving this overview of that there's these three phases and it's a high level. Yeah, no, I remember that. And I, I think it was, there was, uh, it's what's kind of happened in the other chapters of having a lot of description, but not necessarily having the, um, having the explanation, but not necessarily the description right next to it. So it's easy to kind of forget where you are as you go through. Um, anyway, go ahead, keep explaining. All right. Uh, so we got the planning phase, determining the hypotheses. They're pulling out the experiment design tool now. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, to another USC graduate student, there's NICO. Mm -hmm. uh, so a lot of this is, um, and we, we updated the thing following your directions where we're, uh, we didn't want to just explain, uh, by the way, in nine and eight, uh, you'll get to it in nine where we, we didn't want to just, even though we, there's different experiment design toolkits for these two chapters because they're different. Right. Um, they're different kinds of tests. Mm -hmm. Um, but we have to explain them in both places because people will just use chapter eight or just use chapter nine. I also want to design a lot of these chapters as standalone should O'Reilly decide to Got it. distribute them that way. Okay. Um, they just have to be because they're going to ultimately end up being like workshops and stuff like that. Right. I remember so, us talking about this right here of just making sure that it's clear what's going on. Yeah. Yeah. We made this a lot better. You should be happy. Um, it's, it's really complicated. Um, we have this flow diagram. Uh, and we have the intro, it's been updated. We have art that needs updating, then the setup, the prototype demo, the screens are going to be slightly updated. Um, then you get into the prototype demo, hypothesis validation, closing. Now, rehearse, rehearse. Now it's time to rehearse the entire interview, plan for technology challenges. Mm -hmm. Uh, you wanted to know how different contrast Jessica with Nico. Mm -hmm. And in most cases, Jessica and Nico's were almost the same. And if that's the case, then that's what it was. But that's generally like a tactic to use in storytelling to give more information. So ah. yeah, we put we put Nico everywhere. I left some comments with whatever I did so you can see it, but I think most of these we'll probably just get rid of because it's either not that unique and interesting and it's pretty close to what Nico did or it's not particularly helpful or important to know. And that's what it is. Yeah. It's just a juxtaposing something against another thing is just a way of helping explain yep. it, flesh out the picture. So. Got it. Okay. So then this is resolved. Yes. Or do you want to read it when you go through it? No, you can just, because I'd say at this point, because this I, this is what's happened in other chapters when I've gone back and you guys have resolved stuff, is that comments that I've made haven't been relevant anymore because you both fixed it. Got and it. so that's what's happening when I'm reading it is just, I'm reading it and it's like, this is an issue now. So if it's not, if it's an issue, it'll pop up again and if it's not, then it won't. This is the same thing. All right, I'm gonna kill that one. Um... Sarah, do you know no one before us has detailed exactly how to do an online user research study step by step? No. I still use your book, Jamie, when I have to do stuff. <laughs> Thank you. Well, this one's, you should throw that one away. This one's better. Um, the Chinese version, too. <laughs> it's amazing how you can, like, really just dark out. <laughs> um, so, but also like we're getting the homework back with the new book from the students mm -hmm. and most, sometimes it's really great and sometimes it's bad. And it's like, when we do the big rewind, we've got some serious stuff to update. Yeah. 
basically like when I'm saying give Nico and Jessica examples, I'm just thinking, I mean, Jamie knows this. I'm a very inquisitive person and I'm a very close reader. If I ask a question, it probably means there's something missing. Learned this in my professional career. And so that's when we, that's when it's like, do we need another Jessica example or a student example to show how there's some variation or nuance? And if it's not, then it's not, and that's fine. And maybe there's just reassurance on the reader's part as well of just like, you won't see a lot of variation. It's a simple phrase like that. Because yeah. a, good, a good writer, and this is what happens in a lot of the book, and it happened a couple of times where like I'd leave a comment and I'd think thinking like a question and then I'd see the answer to my question, like a couple of lines later, a different paragraph, and then I go back and I remove it. Mm -hmm. Like that's, that's Yeah, we put in we put in all the um like examples about Nico anywhere where I could fit them. Uh we got him on the call and I like re I wrote up his his process everywhere I could fit it. Um so you'll see that when you go through this chapter. So hopefully that helps a little bit. Yeah, I think like that was the main thing with the discussion points of just, I wasn't grounded in the example with Nico. And so because there was a lot of telling of the steps, I wasn't sure where I, I couldn't orient myself in the information. So if you went through and added all the Nico examples, it should be fine yeah. because that was the same comment basically with the Jessica examples and that wasn't a big issue in chapter seven now. So like that one part in adding the storyboard is the linchpin part definitely did it. Okay, and so when you look at eight, you might want to read through eight and nines to see how we we basically started really making them similar. Like in nine, we actually have the screen that shows how Volkswagen presented their data to stakeholders. So we did the same here, presenting the data. And this is a, a screen that we have to redo. That's why it says placeholder. Mm, but we actually okay. fleshed out yesterday this paragraph. What will be there. <laughs> what right. will be there. And, it, and I'm happy because it's like kind of like, why was I in the first book teaching how to do all these things, but it's like, then what? How do you present it? And we looked everywhere on presenting data. I even forced her to go to a, like a presenting the data workshop. Right. Where they didn't present the data. Yeah. Um, even after, and then Jessica asked, right, Jessica? Indeed. During their uh, Q&A session, I was like, so how would I actually present this data to a stakeholder? Like on a slide, like show them the data, like a slide, a report, anything like that. And they were just like, oh man, like that's a whole topic in and of it. We should do a talk on that. And I was like, what was this talk for? Yeah. yeah. yeah they were just talking about like how to like review your data and come up with insights. And I was like, I was gonna, I was gonna say, I like the idea of the parallel structure, so I'm definitely looking forward to that because that's a good way, again, of that orientation for the reader of having an implicit recognition of like, oh, I'm here now, or this is similar to what I was looking at before. Because the main yeah. thing, another thing with the chapter eight and nine that I was having trouble with, and again, it's interesting for me, Jamie, because as you say, like, this is all new material for me. I don't know where this is coming from. So I'm definitely coming from just like, I'm gonna pick up the book and read it and try and understand it. Um, Okay. Was like chapter eight and nine, I think I was starting to get lost as to whether we were being consecutive in the process or if the process was like, depending on where you are, what are you trying to achieve? Like maybe chapter eight and nine could happen. Maybe you could go from chapter seven to chapter nine, depending yeah, on. Absolutely. absolutely. It's definitely, it's definitely, they could go to eight or nine for sure. Right. So um, that then is an end for chapter seven that, that paragraph, like chapter three that I was thinking of, of like, you built a oh. prototype. If you want to do this, go to chapter nine. If you want to do this, go to chapter eight, no matter what you're doing an experiment now. What do you think, Jessica, should we do that? Yeah, I think that that would be helpful. Um, not necessarily, we don't need like a whole, like here's the structure and all the bullet points, but just in that like last sentence of the recap, say like, you know, like now you're going to chapter here. eight to collect some qualitative information and improve this prototype. Yeah. And then, you know, when you're ready, head to chapter nine where you can collect, you well, know, more quantitative yeah. data from a larger sample set to, to really figure out if people are interested in your idea. Right. Yeah, I think it would be interesting. I don't want them to necessarily give a, I don't just give any hint that they should skip nine, eight, because I think there's stuff in eight where we explain the experiment design tool that, if they haven't read it, they may not get it in nine. Right. I mean, like if they're reading it from 
page one to nine, like they're, they're gonna go through chapter eight and nine. But again, it helps with that orientation of the reader of like, oh, because the way I was reading it and why I was getting lost is this thought of like, I'm building a prototype, then I'm doing online guerrilla user research, and then I'm doing this. But it, it's more adaptive, depending on what we're trying to do. And so maybe that's also something at the end of eight as well, of just like, maybe you run the experiment again. Now move on to nine if you're here. Go back to seven if you have to redo the prototype. Yeah. Okay, I want to walt waltz you through nine, eight and nine real fast, just so yeah. uh, since we got you. Well, well we did, we were doing, uh, actually nine and 10. So you saw a, we, we really, not to get all like defensive or whatever, I just so you know, I, I, we were extremely thorough for both eight and nine in like how we're going to explain these things and why we had to create that tool and 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 testing it and um we even had a call with google because we were going to try to have google ads and not just facebook and it told and we even explained that so they took a lot of time and they have a lot of details so we're definitely not looking to add more stuff to them or make them more complicated mm -hmm. um so, but they, they were definitely like, you know, like where we are with 10, like when is this ever gonna be done? And then another thing is we went and validated them against every single article ever written on that particular subject. Like I, I, for online user research, I gave one of my students, I, I gave an entire class of students to find an article, an original article on online user research. So we had every possible article um, and there was like three. I mean, they couldn't, they were finding ones that weren't really about it. They would be maybe like, oh, I'm going to use validate lead usability testing. Mm -hmm. So, um, like on NMM, uh, there was some good stuff on there, but in general, we really had to make a lot of stuff up based on the class pivoting so fast during the pandemic. And seeing like, what did 25 people do with a week to figure out how they're going to recruit, how they're going to all of a sudden do something they were planning on doing in a cafe. And so that's where we got like incredible amounts of content. And um, so that's eight. And then nine, um, you know, for us, the challenge of this was getting in a real case study from Volkswagen. I'm going to work on the anecdote about me after we turn in all the chapters to the reviewers, the reviewers, three of the tech reviewers, by the way, one is my dear friend, uh, Bill Clevenger, who's like the VP of VP of VP of UX at Adobe. Mm -hmm. So that's extremely useful for someone who's been doing product forever. Mm -hmm. And I've known him for a billion years, at least 30. And then uh, Chris Chandler, from philosophy. So we have the agency perspective and he actually calls himself a product strategist now. Yeah, I saw that. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people who like, and, and you'll see that introduced again, like why we're saying product strategy is kind of okay now, we have to figure that out is because people who used to call themselves UX designers are calling themselves product designers. Yeah. Thus, so if, right? No, I agree. I'd say for the last two or three years, I've vacillated onto whether to just call myself a product strategist so I don't have to deal with conversations and people will just hire me for the right things, honestly. Exactly. So that's why the new title is Product Strategy Techniques, you know, but it has UX in it, you yeah. know. It's, um, it's just, you know, so it's like if you're doing, you know, but it's not like I'm like doing the, the guys at Instagram, you know, in the Netflix doc where they're saying, all our product designers are product strategists. They're really trying to figure out strategically where, you know, where a button should go. I'm like, that's not product strategy, that's design. You know, like, Bleh! you know, our, our process, and still all over the web, the process of UX strategy is that we're gonna start by doing wireframing. I'm like, ah! Yeah. Um, you know, so the other, you know, that's why the, uh, anyway, so blah, blah, blah. So what's, what's new and different and wonderful about Nine is that, we go back, you know, dipping in history and talk about this Ada funnel because there was 9 million funnels and we discovered this funnel from 1898. 
that was yeah, used. I remember you said earlier that you, the funnel, the original funnel that you used to use, you've never really used. And so this is much more simplified and also just more adaptive and makes sense. Mm -hmm. And more, and, and moreover is that chapter nine, the old one was the funnel matrix focused on if you had a product, like yes. when I would give it as an assignment to my students, it was like, they had to like fantasy land, like, okay, the user would go here and what metrics. And because it's like, now I'm stating this book is about you, you either, you have no product and you're de-risking the business concept or you, um, you have a product, but you're like, we want to totally reinvent it. And so it's like, we don't want to sit there. We don't, we want to just like work from the point of at this point, just getting suspects and getting people to validate the idea. We're yeah, not building the product. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not product strategy. Like what's our strategy for creating this product? What's our process? It's strategy. Like, you know, how is it going to make money? You know, all the stuff that's in here. So the Ada funnel is all about marketing and advertising and like how to use customers. And we're giving them a history of that. Um, and then we're explaining, this was super hard to write. Um, what's your face? Lex helped a lot with growth design and we were able to mash together and connect the dots between growth design and hooked. What growth hacking, growth design and hooked. And uh, if you watch the documentary Social Dilemma, you'll see that it's totally on message. Mm -hmm. I remember like all of these sections, it's kind of like what happened with chapter seven, all of the sections and information made sense, but it was again, the flow of going through, which is on the phone. <laughs> yeah. That's great. Okay. Okay. I'm gonna, if you put it outside after five, can I get it? You leave the keys with the sales department and I could come in, I don't know, by six. Thanks so much. You guys are right. Thank you very much. Bye. Okay. Sorry. Hi. I'm sorry. So I was going to say like all of the, the individual sections, because chapter nine actually now is kind of doing what chapter two did, where you're talking about a lot of concepts and trying to tie them together and pull it together so it's understandable. And so again, at least like the main, the main point that I had when we discussed at the beginning of September was like story-wise as the reader, I wasn't sure how to orient myself and digest it in regards to the flow. So I think that if we have at the ending of those chapters, just kind of a little bit of orientation or at the beginning of like, if you are here in your process, then this is how you can start digesting the chapter or what this chapter might mean to you, then that will probably be really helpful as a way to spear into things. Okay. Yeah. So, so all that's happening in here is we're explaining the concept of uh, conversion and, you know, and, and, and where the funnel is in terms of just getting people interested and then mapping that to the funnel of just marketing to landing page experiments mm -hmm. and, um, and just breaking it down and then bringing in, yay, Volkswagen, yep. this great case study that we have that really gives, you know, it's like shows to, you know, this is me really trying to show to the enterprises, like, Experiments aren't just for lean startups. Come on, you know, you like, you know, you should be using them, you know, in enterprises and agencies to, to figure things out. And so by showing the Volkswagen one, we've got the German, we got the English version. Um, and then explaining the results, we had to alter them, but basically it's, you know, we, we, we really walk them through it in a generic way so they could use whatever stupid tool they, use, they want. Yep. Um, and then we explain how to run an ad. We had to use Facebook and not Google because Google for uh, reasons we mentioned, uh, that you can't, you really use Google for, you know, cheap or fast. Mm -hmm. Um, and then we walk them through creating the campaign and then we have to interject 
uh, well, Jessica's in there because I wanted to teach problem solutions, and that might be a little janky. She has to update these, they're placeholders. Is that right? Yeah. All right. And, um, and then we show the problem solution conversion that you can get results with just $5, which I don't want to lose because it's amazing, you know, that you can do this and people should know. I've done it now hundreds of times. Okay. And then it ends again. It needs to be mapped to the other. I don't know if the one said the other ones are presenting the data or presenting. They should both say presenting the results or whatever, presenting the findings. They should be the sim similar. And so just keep that in mind when you look at them both Got and it. we break down how, how they made money and regardless, you know, and here's all, you know, you learn this, you learn that, da, 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 da. That is, you know, discuss, uh, you have relies on your marketing design teams working together in harmony, learning these landing page, blah, blah, blah. I most importantly, you learn what you and your team can have fun with funnels. Yep. Okay. That's nine. And then 10, just a heads up on what a nightmare it is. I'm going to say, is it a throwback to our edition one? We've got a story of, uh, no, almost as bad. Uh, we've got Benjamin. You might remember him. I do. Uh, I remember. We had a story and we couldn't use it, right? Yeah. Yeah. Because he had no, because Lane was like, there's no takeaways. It's like apple pie. So we learned more details and amped them up. We punched up. And so we've got like, uh, and, and we put in here, so you, this is the digital transformation story. So these are just for you. This okay. is a transformation point. So you understand like why the story, how the story is supposed to work. Like this happens and then this happens and he goes through these life transformations. So this is where I'm going to tell you to remove those because if you've written it correctly, I don't need that note there. Okay. If it's written in a way that I get that, then that's true and I'll get it. Okay. I trust, like, I, I don't doubt that everything has been verified in everything that you said. It's the, 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 the main thing in the edit is if you're not there talking to them on the phone or holding their hands, are they understanding all that, right? Because that's the intention that you're trying to bring to the page. Um, in a subconscious way. They don't, right? Yeah. Not, like... We're, without telling them, it, yep. you know, we'll, we'll get to these lessons learned and it'll have something about transformation, you know? Okay. Yeah. Um, and also the problem with Ken is that he goes back further than Grandpa Alex, who's in the next chapter, right. and he's also a story of hardship. And I feel like there's something interesting in especially this story right now because of the pandemic mm. um, that about adapting to situations and transforming and you know I don't know what it is but anyway so then we have what is digital transformation and why the hell is it the last chapter of a book on UX strategy which I think so is you're not fun. doing the interviews at all those are gone gone okay dead to us okay now oh, well then that makes sense your comment in chapter one about maybe taking some of their quotes and stuff and putting it there instead of the myths. Forming new quotes. Yeah. Or getting new quotes. Yeah. If that's what you decide. <laughs> well, yeah. Well, we have the root. So here, by the way, 10, we're walking them through basically my talk that I gave at a few conferences about how I got hired for a digital transformation job. And I didn't even know what digital transformation meant. And I was like, there was so much money. I was like, yeah, I can do this. And so it's also trying to be like, look, even at, age 50 something I'm learning on the job and saying I can do something that I haven't heard of and just like on my own volition getting up to speed so I start like by taking this stupid class on LinkedIn you know and getting this ridiculous certificate ha 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 and then explaining some of the concepts um this is just our outline for us okay. um and then and then yay we came up and instead of doing this plates we made the four across, but we, we broke digital transformation into four things, four areas. We don't know how it's going to look, but we do know that it's going to drive how we explain the different components of it. And then it's then going to map to, so who knows, there, maybe today's buzzword is your next job title. Then comes weird transition mobility sidebar, because we haven't talked about mobility yet. 
Then comes another weird transition. Now we're talking about the Volkswagen case study and their digital transformation. Okay. And we talked about moving that mobility sidebar into the Volkswagen case study. Like whenever we first mentioned mobility, say like, see a sidebar. We just put it in between because we're not sure where exactly it's going to go yet because we haven't fleshed out the Volkswagen section, but it is definitely subject to move. Okay. Right. And we might even integrate the, 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 the four areas into the, the case study. It is just, so you know, it is a broken mess. We are just getting the concept and the, and the framework in there, and we're going to try to work on it in the next couple of days so we can give you something to clean up a little bit to get it to the readers, even though, as I mentioned, oh, so it's Chris, it's Phil, and then it's this woman in uh, Berlin who's kind of like a startup mentor, very, very, you know, business savvy woman. And so I expect they're going to give very supportive comments. And if we just put a note, like this chapter is totally drafty, it's okay. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like they're not going to, they know that we're literally writing it as they're reading it because otherwise we would have given them the whole right. manuscript. Right. Got it. Okay. I'm actually most excited about seeing this chapter, Jamie. Well, I guess like, because this will really also show how much you've grown as a storyteller in the last five years. I mean, like, I can see it no matter what across all the drafts, but I'm very curious because this one is where you were when you started with edition one as well of like, what is the framework? <laughs> yeah, mm -hmm. it is. It is, it is, it is, a, it, is a, it is a throwback to that, except again, with me rifling through books and trying to tie it in. What's different now is that there's Jessica sitting there with me trying to figure it out. And I'm just, as soon as I hit a wall, she's like looking it up and we're, you know, I found a, a way to make things move faster. Awesome. Great. So the thing to know about 10 is, is that we have to now make it work with 11 because all of a sudden we have to like come in here and make update this chapter so it's about stupid metro not stupid i love you metro mile about metro mile and this one's about you know volkswagen you know and, and, and one's about the the class from usc and yeah. then all of a sudden it goes into this weird transition less than a five hour drive from tarnipal poland where my maternal grandpa alex was born uh where my paternal uh, where to flip that we have to flip it uh, basically, we're showing that uh, the story that you just read, this one takes place uh, less than 100 miles away. But now we're fast forwarding in time, and then we introduce this story of Grandpa Alex, and we just have to be careful that these, these, some of these could perfectly end Benjamin's story, but we need, that's the hard part about 10 is like, you know, because Benjamin... Different. Yeah. They have to be different. They have to be about transformation. So that's kind of like 10 is, is going to be like, a, it's a lot of work. And that's why I'm just saying, like, we're like trying to balance like changes you're making. Like when we do the big rewind, we're going to be looking at your comments. We're going to be looking at the comments from the tech the, reviewers, the tech reviewers, and then all the homework I've received from USC where the kids read the chapters and got a bunch of crap wrong. Got it. So can you imagine that we're going to have a month to like, you know, plus I'm reading like Eric Reese's new book and like, I, I, I you know, swipe to unlock. Like, it's like, I got to like close, like no, no, new con no new content, you know? Yep. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and take care of eight and Gonna definitely do eight. I don't know about nine, but the goal is to get to nine if possible. And as you can see from chapter seven, like there wasn't actually a lot of rewriting. It was a lot of refining that was going on. So what I'm also gonna do is if I have sections that I'm reorganizing, I'm gonna try and do it in the body of the yeah. document as best as I can. Um, right. Just duplicate the paragraph and change it and just say Sarah's version. Yeah. And then we can get to it and go, yeah, we love that. But, uh, you know. All right. So that's what I'm going to do. And update the, the sidebar for and seven. Sidebar. I'm actually going to write that down because I can see yeah. myself walking away from the theater and not doing that. <laughs> okay. So right. I got to walk you through where we're at. So you have the 
big picture of yeah i think like i definitely have been uncertain because it's been in the process while it's while i've been reading it so it's definitely helpful to have like the high level view of what you all see as the end of this book which is definitely different from what the original was so but i shouldn't say original what edition was was because now we were in 2.0 <laughs> yeah the new the improved yeah and i can share with you and we'll end in a second this like we you know and and, and believe me o'reilly is on us because they want to hit the deadline there's already pre-orders you know oh. like <laughs> Jamie, you can imagine yourself here almost in a way is probably what J.K. Rowling was experiencing towards the end of the Harry Potter series, is everybody just on her about getting those books done. <laughs> That's true, at least you don't have like crazy super fans that are like they're planning what the next book is going to look like for you and like posting about it online. I don't know, right, right, we could get inspiration I, I, from that though. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, I was super impressed that she even decided to write afterwards because it's her first series. Yeah. And um, I don't know, Jessica, if you ever read the book series or anything, but I feel like you can definitely tell the earlier books are better edited and more concise and tight than the later books. And that's probably because people were like, just get them out there. Just put them on the press and just like publish. <laughs> so, Jamie, if you ever write a third edition, it's just going to, everyone's just going to be clamoring for it. You're just going to throw it up. You guys, stop it. All right. I'll be like 60. It's too late. I, I'll, we'll see. I'm going back into consulting, Sarah. I, I gotta get out of this whole teaching thing. There's no money, clearly. Uh, my house is falling apart. So here's like the, the, our, our crazy schedule, mm. you know, that was supposed to end in September and now is going till like Thanksgiving. November. But like, so we're here like pretending we're finishing chapter 10, seven to nine now goes to the tech reviewers. And then next week is just like trying to get 10 and 11 out so they make some kind of sense. While you're, we're going to be editing them while you're editing them. Yeah. Simultaneously. Just like we're, you and I are going to be in the, all three of us are going to be in the same docs, just trying to get them into a place that we could send 10 and 11 out on the second yeah. without, um, where, where, where they can give some kind of useful feedback. Yeah. Where you don't have to sit down and explain it and walk it through. Like they get a sense of what's going on. Yep. I get it. And that, and that, that's going to be, and then the, te and then it's like, we're going back. Then it's like, we, we, we have a few weeks to go back and write the, the timeline we'll do here. And then the Jamie VW story, mm -hmm. and that goes into here. And then all of a sudden comes back the reviews and the big rewind. And we're now on the 20th of October going for our, like every day, like, okay, let's try to get out chapter one, chapter two, chapter three chapter right. four like going through here and you know pretending you know that we're going to literally hit november 17th right turn it in because you can see right here like if we're going to get it out february 9th like they this is when it goes into whatever they they put it into the book form to get it into whatever qc and they then all of a sudden we're reviewing their ce review so it's like there's no there's no crazy room yeah okay Excellent. It's insane. Fine. We're fine. Everything's fine. <laughs> yeah, that's great. We are that meme of the dog with a cup of tea sitting in the fire going, this is fine. I'm fine. This is, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Fitzgerald rewrote The Great Gatsby just as it was on the printer press. And this is why we have it. So he can do it. So Sarah, we're gonna need, you know, I'll, I'll have to, you know, even if I have to pull money out of my personal savings, we're, it, you know, we're gonna need, we're gonna probably need you through, you know, I know you were gonna disappear in November, but there's gonna be shit happening. Actually, we're gonna be doing artwork in here. So maybe you won't, we won't need you. Maybe yeah. we'll be doing it by the end of October. That's that's my goal. I see everything as much done for my part in October because it sounds like if you have to go through all the reviews and everything, that should take up most of November. Basically, like I'm gonna hopefully disappear all of November. That's the plan, and then resurface sometimes mid December. I have my own novel to write a new draft on, which I haven't touched at all this year because guess who's been building account portals and helping companies launch new companies all year. <laughs> 
I hear you. It's been a pandemic, in case you haven't known. <laughs> yeah, I'll tell you, the pandemic's great for writing a book, you know? It's like not much going on. Right. Um, so that's great. So, yeah, so, uh, you know, so you're going to be very busy during October with the book. And just get jammed through seven through eight because nine is going to be all new shit and 10 is going to be so much work. I was telling Jessica, it looks like it's been about two or three hours per chapter. So I, as I said, like eight, I can definitely jam through. I'm going to take a break, take a walk, come back, sit down and do it. And then potentially nine would probably be that as well. And so I'm going to try and, as I said, let's, I'll, I'll join in on the call tomorrow if you send me an invite and I'm going to try and hit it so that we can go through all the comments and then that way you all are good for Friday. Yeah. I can just add you to all, we have weekly daily meetings at the same time. I can just add you and you can just jump in whenever. Yeah. In the next. yeah. yeah just do that. I'll, I'll just add you to, you don't have to show up to them or, or yeah. delete the ones that you know you're not going to go to. Yeah. I think in October there's going to be this like, hey, okay, Sarah, here's one. We did your updates. We did the tech reviewers. We did, the homework updates, it's your last chance. And then- Yeah, and that, that goes with what I was saying for my step, my third read through. I'm very confident that for one through six, like it'll just be everything that you added going through and just being like probably grammatical changes, seeing up some sentences and everything like that. Seven, I think we're probably very close on, honestly, based on all the changes. And so hopefully we can get eight and nine kind of in that same boat where I'm feeling at least confident that it's probably just, you know, a copy edit that we're looking at. 10, I agree with you. If that's what we're looking at, then it'll be a little bit more. Um, oh, God. It, it's bad. But we have an Easter egg for you at the top of 10. Thanks to... Uh, uh, yay. <laughs> and it's perfect. Mm -hmm. it's a, it, 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 like, I, I took the one less traveled and we did your sandwich. And then you get to the very end, and it ends with uh, basically. Um, I love that you're using my sandwich. Like, oh, I, I does it does reference it regularly. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> like in the ending, you know, it's like only time will tell that it, having an open mind, unpredictable is how DT need to be approached. It's like hundreds of lean startup experiments going on at once with the hope that at least some will reverberate with the customer. You can. Look at risk in one of two ways. You can continue down the road in the direction you've always gone and avoid making any detours, or you can choose a road less traveled and see where it takes you. The first option might be more sensible and certainly easier, but if you keep taking the same route over and over, then you're bound to be bypassed by someone who finds a more optimal route. We need a better that's ending. Right, line. it is definitely like the epilogue, but now that I'm seeing that ending, like that's good. I want you to know, Jamie, I don't know if you remember, but back when we were writing edition one, you would tell me that you would write thinking to yourself, what's the first thing Sarah is going to cut when things? <laughs> and I am definitely editing now going like, how much does Jamie love this sentence that she created? <laughs> and Sometimes it's for the best though, when you highlight like, it and you're like, delete this. <laughs> you know, we come back through and we go, you know, we did take two hours to write that sentence, but it is garbage in retrospect. <laughs> And we have video showing us writing a three-hour call writing one paragraph. It's online. So. I'm glad you're doing this stuff because, as we all know, like people definitely have very little appreciation for the art of communication, which I think is very prevalent. You know that lack of appreciation is prevalent across our world right now. And it's in, and the fact that I've always appreciated that you work really hard on making sure that you choose the right terminology. And so when you get comments of like, you know, oh, it seems like you're using words here and there or just kind of all over the place. I know that you have agonized over whether you're going to say term or word or definition. <laughs> Almost any, any particular word, there was uh, probably 90% likelihood that there was a 20 minute Google deep dive and or trip to the thesaurus.com to figure out exactly what word needed to go there. Not even, yeah. not, it's like 110% like likelihood that that's exactly what happened. And I love the fact with Jamie that it's not even like the big words, like juxtapose. It's like, <laughs> it's like compare. She's compare Mary versus check. Dictionary.com and then she'll go check her books, right, Jessica? And make yeah. like what everybody else, like 
Yeah. Like, good. How do you use leverage in another chapter? We got to find another word. Yeah. This is true. You're the first person I've ever met that's like, I think I used this word like a hundred pages ago. We can't use it here. I was like, we use all kinds of words over and over, but she's very thoughtful about it. And this is why then, because you set yourself up for this, Davey. Like, you're, this is who you are. And this is why Jessica and I tease you about a third edition. <laughs> oh, it'll you're be too good at writing. You are who you are, and we, we love you for it. Well, thank you for <laughs> Very supporting true. me in my fantasy world of thinking not I can a fantasy world. Yeah, so It's not a fantasy world. You validated it. It's coming down the pipeline. This is digital transformation of your product. <laughs> right? It's no longer an MVP or a startup. <laughs> the transformation of Jamie Levy. Jamie Levy, the second edition book author. Well, you guys are being transformed with me, okay? It's beautiful. <laughs> It's true, definitely. All right, I'm gonna let, I'm gonna go take a break and tackle these things since we are going. Lots awesome. to do. All Thanks, right. Sarah. Bye. Thanks. Okay. Yep. I've got nothing more to say. I'm feeling I'm feeling good about this. <laughs> How are you feeling? Are you I, feeling like just looking at the schedule stresses you out? Looking at chapter 10, it looks like so garbagey. Uh, okay, but every time we go into chapter 10, you're like, it's not as bad as I thought it was. Like, I feel like when we leave it for a day or two, you're just like, this is garbage. It's useless, and we're going to have to rewrite everything. But when we reopen it, you're like, well, this part was actually kind of salvageable. Like, it's not, it needs a lot of TLC. Go, are we going to get to go back to tomorrow is what I care about. I think, yeah, I think that we should address the last couple of things in seven. I looked through, there was only like four or five comments where there was something that it was like, oh, Jamie and Jessica need to come back to this. So we should just look at those so we can check it off and it's done. Um, it's pretty much just comparing like something Sarah wanted to rewrite with what we wrote or okay. um, like rewriting that little recap at the end to indicate where chapter eight and chapter nine are going to go. Just like one sentence. So it's small things. I think we can do that and then still get back to 10 tomorrow. Fantastic. And tomorrow, my favorite thing about tomorrow is that it's October. Yes, true story. You know, and then I can just say next month, I'm going back to Berlin. Right now. That I much closer. All right. So yeah, it looks like I got a bunch of student calls and then a break until you go. Okay. It's been fun. All right. I will see you tomorrow. Bye. Thanks so Bye. much. Of course, bye.